of this meeting. Yeah. Let me just get a snack first. Snack? I brought a snack. Oh, that's okay. I'm I'm good. I don't know. I got this. <laughs> Told you I brought a snack. There's a better way to eat pickles on the go. Sucker Punch, the snack with a snap. the number of participants who had a shot at this, who wanted to be one of 12 of 60-something thousand. thousand. I mean, that's impressive in and of itself. What a diverse group of drivers. What a diverse group of participants. Just really cool. They should all be very, very proud. around four platforms. I mean, I'm lucky to be here. Every one of them deserves to be there, celebrating the fact that they were here and a part of this very first ever Prodigy Week for Racing Prodigy, and what a three days it was. And here we go, they're gonna spray it. <laughs> let's see if they've learned how to spray the champagne. We're just 57 days away from landing back at the Atlanta Motorsports Park for Prodigy Week Part 2. But today it's time to find out who will be making that journey in our Round 2 of the Prodigy Racing League Sucker Punch Golden Mazda MX-5 Cup Tournament here on a Race Room. Our Junior Kanki Party alongside of Lu uh, uh, Joey Tebbin as we get ready to go. Joey, I've been quite excited, ready to go after our first round, let's be honest, really set our expectations high. Prodigy Pass winners already watching on now from the sidelines to see who'll join them in those 57 days time. Those races at Road America just two weeks ago, absolutely incredible. Just a demonstration of how fantastic Spec Miata or MX-5 style racing is. But now it's going to be a very different track. Brands Hatch, we've crossed an ocean, more high-speed corners, more difficulty in keeping the car on the track. It's going to be a whole nother challenge and another very, very deserving Prodigy Pass winner in just a couple of hours' time. Yes, let's talk about the format, by the way, because if you're joining us for the first time, well... There's a little bit to explain. For those who are familiar with us, there's uh, not much to necessarily talk about because you're familiar with the time attacks that we've always started with. The opportunity for anybody to get onto a public leaderboard and become one of the fastest. Joey, we then take the first 48 of those, split them into two semi-finals, set them to the task at hand, 
Again, cut them in half, and then the final coming up later will be where the Prodigy Pass is on the line. It is high drama all the way around. It's not just about fighting for the win in these semifinals, although that is very important. You do want to start up front. It's also about fighting for that 12th place transfer spot. So every time we do one of these semifinals, it's those spots between about 10 and 15 that are most hotly contested, and that's going to be a fantastic place to watch. And then once you get into the final, we do a little bit of the Prodigy Zipper, where the top 12 qualifiers from the semifinals are ordered by their lap time, their fastest lap time in the race. So for example, the fastest first place finisher gets to start on pole. The second fastest first place finisher gets to start second and so on. That's the magic of the Prodigy Zipper in qualifying. And it's always interesting to try and figure out how much they really want to push to try and make sure they get that fastest lap. And looking through that, the most important thing, I guess, that we haven't touched on just yet is the fact that three Prodigy passes are going to be earned from each of these event finals. We've got one more coming up uh, in a couple more weeks' time, but one more to be handed out from the racing action. That is the overall series champion. Two, though, will be selected by the Prodigy Search se uh, Selection Committee. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we dive into all of the action. But we have so many people that make all of this possible. Let's talk about them, let's thank them for their support, and then we'll focus on their cars racing out on track. Sucker Punch, all natural pickle juice shooters for clean hydration. Pickle chip pouches, perfect for those long sim racing sessions or days at the track. And the Jared Pickles with knockout flavor, the champ of chomp, now available in the US. Mazda Motorsports has partnered with Racing Prodigy to continue its mission of supporting race car drivers, enriching lives and developing the next racing prodigies. Mazda is supporting participants by providing $2,500 in coaching vouchers on the Racing Prodigy coaching marketplace. Astatec wheelbases with their revolutionary quick release system allows you to easily switch wheels with just a click. SimLab P1X Pro Sim Racing cockpits with unparalleled in rigidity, functionality and design are your perfect sim racing base. And last but not least, Advanced Sim Racing, owned and operated by passionate sim racers. Advanced Sim Racing is the fastest growing North American sim racing chassis manufacturer and equipment retailer. And of course, all of our sponsors will have cars out on track. It makes it so much easier for A, the commentators to figure out who is who, but also for us to just get to uh, attach ourselves to those sponsors just that little bit more. Joey Bransatch, let's talk about it just a little bit. Undulating roller coaster of a track. And in these MX-5s, I think we're going to expect plenty of close racing. It's going to be very close racing. The difficulty is going to be in finding places to pass because as we watch some action on track right now, a little bit of tire warming up, every single corner on this track, bar maybe the hairpin, is a very, very high speed corner. This final corner here, so high speed, so high commitment. The second to last corner, so high speed, so high commitment. I could say that for every single corner on this track. It's going to be a question of can you keep it on the track? Can you keep it in that draft train? And it might just come down to the run out of Clark at that final corner and the run to the line once it comes time to decide the winner. Yes, and we talked a little bit, of course, about previous Prodigy Pass winners. Uh, we're going to have, in total, 16 winning Prodigy Pass members join us uh, for Prodigy Week Part 2. We are also delighted to be able to announce that Julian Klaffenbach is going to be joining us. He won a Prodigy Pass in the search selection committee process in the build-up to Prodigy Week 1. Unfortunately, he lost uh, one of his grandparents the week of Prodigy Week uh, and the Prodigy uh, Racing Prodigy team have been able to bring him back over for Prodigy Week Part 2 and the newly minted R8G driver going to be joining one more of these drivers that we see out today ready on the playing field. Now practice has just come to a close. Joey, how important is qualifying going to be in these semifinals? Well, as I mentioned, it's difficult to pass here, so qualifying is going to be more important than maybe it ever has. Road America, plenty of opportunities to pass, plenty of heavy braking zones. Brands Hatch, not the same case. There is one heavy braking zone into the Druid's hairpin. Every other track is mid to high speed. Qualifying is going to be very important. You need that track position. You need to be 100% committed in this qualifying session. You are curious, by the way, about uh, the next round of the... Uh, Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series uh, powered by Sucker Punch. Whilst it will open up in just a couple of hours' time, so if you want to go racing at Mid-Ohio, which I think in a lot of ways uh, bears a lot of similarities to Brands Hatch, you can go and get your Racing Prodigy membership with the Race Room Game Pass at RacingProdigy.com to compete for your Prodigy Pass and other prizes. It's interesting, right, the three tracks that we've kind of been racing at, Joey, because I look at all of them and I go, huh, 
there are close racing opportunities, but like you say here, mid-Ohio, there's maybe only one real passing opportunity there. Yeah, it's similar to Brands Hatch in that way. I'll call it the Brands Hatch of the East. Maybe it's also just as difficult to access using public transportation. I don't know about that either, but you see Nathan Maximin on your screen right now. He was with us in the uh, previous event, if I'm not mistaken. Many racing prodigy events in the past as well, looking to get that prodigy pass, but you see him through this middle sector. It's basically an oval. You've got a high speed 90 degree corner through Hawthorns, a high speed just over 90 degree corner through Westfield, then down through the best named straight in racing. That's Dingle Dell through Sheen Curve, high commitment as well, and then one more 90 degree corner to the left this time they basically built an oval through here i think they might have they might have preceded oval racing just in brands hatch and one of the great things about this track in particular is basically every part of the track has a distinct name so you can very much uh instead of faffing around with corner numbers just get right to the task at hand now really clattered over the curb through that inside we're going to see first qualifying times on the board still about eight minutes left in this session so plenty of time for drivers to build up in this qualifying session now that's going to be uh, for maximum, only 15th on the board, it would seem, as we wait for the rest of the time to filter on in. But Michael Romanidis has gone to the top three tenths back to Philip Drace, and then Turka Hakan and Nico Sonal and Leonard Heidegger, the rest of your top five. Now, with six tenths splitting the top five, Joey, that's a bit larger of a qualifying margin than maybe we'd expect. Well, with a track that's as committed to commitment as this one is, you can kind of expect a little bit bigger of a margin in qualifying because there's not as many heavy braking zones that'll even out the field. It's all about who can be committed. I'm gonna say the word committed about 15 more times because that's what it's all about. If you can carry the most speed, if you can be inch perfect, there's tense in that. Through every single one of those high speed corners, there is time to be gained. And if you're a driver like Michael Romanidis, who has so much experience in every simulator there is to offer, probably has plenty of experience here at Brands Hatch as well, no surprise that finding that high commitment was not really a difficult thing for him to do in the first minutes of qualifying. And he's already, by the way, cut a tenth out of his opening sector with his next attempt on the lap. So he is really flying a 31-128 for him. There's the look at Turka Hakkinen as one of those ultra wide screens. And look at the amount of lock that he's got to get into the wheel to get it around the long right hander at Drew. Now, Joey, when I think about these cars, I don't necessarily think the formula style wheel. Uh, I'd be curious to think your opinion on that. I, I like seeing the smaller style round rim for these Mazda cars. I think it just kind of comes down to what you're most comfortable with in racing. And if you're comfortable with that formula rim, if that's what you're used to, to driving with, if that's what gives you the most control of the vehicle, I think that works perfectly fine for a car like this because you are still throwing it around more than you are with a formula car. You can abuse the tires a little bit more. They're a little bit harder and they won't fall off as much as they would in an open wheel for formula car. But it does just come down to driver comfortability. And if, if there was an oval racing driver, for example, who was very used to that big circular wheel and he could find a way to drive fast in that way, he could, he could probably go with that as well. I wonder if anybody's trying that. Michael Romanidis, I think, has just improved even more at the front. He's gone to an 18.732, and so that benchmark has just moved even further. The 10 pole that everyone's trying to best, and Turka Hakkinen with a look over to the right. I don't think he's too impressed by this lap, and I don't necessarily think it's going to be too much of an improvement for him. You can see there one of the drivers working their way down underneath uh, that back straightaway. That's Nico Sonal that's in second place right now. Did a 31.235 in the opening sector so about a tenth off of what we saw out of Michael Romanidis on that slightly better lap time and looks pretty calm he was talking and clearly bails from that qualifying attempt to try and go once more he will have time to go once more maybe even twice more but it's an excellent qualifying so far for him I don't believe he qualified anywhere near the top two last time out at Road America but clearly figured out Brands Hatch doing a great job so far. Philip Drace was very competitive at Road America, was definitely in the conversation for the win, didn't quite go his way. But that's one of the things I like about this format as he goes to second. The drivers who win the races are kind of eliminated from contention because they've already won their prodigy passes. So that gives some of the guys who may have finished second, may have been in the fight for the win, their chance to, to have their glory in the next two races. Yep. And, you know, Given that as well, we've got six Prodigy passes up for grab in total on Race Room. I think it's then uh, another six on iRacing. Ooh, it's, there's, a, there's a really cool camera position for Brandon Hawking as we look from directly, I guess, from the dashboard perspective of uh, where he would be in the rig. Sim racer tongue movements and everything going on as he feathers that car through the 
tight right hander. Now, he's got four minutes to go. These lap times being 140 or so. If he finds himself not improving this time around, he has the chance to, like we saw with Sonal, reset and go again. He's not going to get many more chances to try and improve here. I do like Brandon Hawkins' chances today, even if he does qualify a little bit down the order, though, and he does get dumped out of the top 10 with, uh, with one more driver moving into the top 10. But I still remember back to the last R Factor event that we did. It was the Radical at Atlanta Motorsports Park, and Brandon Hawkins was finding places to pass where we said it was impossible. I've spent the whole last 15 minutes telling you how difficult it is to pass a Brands Hatch. I think if anybody's going to get aggressive and move his way forward, I think Brandon Hawkins is going to find a way to get those bumpers out and look his way forward, but that could all be for nothing if this lap does improve his position and he, uh, and he actually improves and starts a little bit further up, but he's got two more corners to go after this. Ultimately, the goal be top 12. The further forward you are in that top 12 gives you a slightly better starting spot for the final. That's coming up slightly uh, later on today. It's just waiting to see who else will improve. Jakub Brzezinski in fourth, the G2 Esports driver, looking to try and join, of course, uh, his teammate uh, Nikodim uh, Viznivski in the Prodigy Pass winning club. Now, Brandon Hawking to the line. Looks very focused. Is it going to improve him from 11th? Just wait to see where it slots in 7th. So there's a small jump, but you'll have to decide if he wants to bail and reset his car like so many others have been doing, uh, Joey. It's interesting you get that call here on Race Room. Do you want to reset your tires, go back and do a fresh lap, or continue around with the tires as they are? And also, you don't have to do a full outlap. It resets you a couple of corners before the start finish line. So you just get to get you get to get straight into it. Don't have to worry about the uh, the large amounts of time on the clock because it takes about a minute and 40 seconds to get around Brands Hatch. You can just go get on it and then you're uh, and then you're ready. And that's exactly what Philip Drace is doing here, I think, as he sends it through the final corner. High commitment. Warm up the tires. You've got one more lap on the clock to find two and a half tenths to beat right Michael Romanidis. I can only wish Philip Drace good luck because that's going to be a big ask. Yeah, Roman Edis, by the way, has not really been able to improve himself. So that 18732 still stands, but only he and Drace have tucked below the 139. So two drivers that are really maximizing the cars and go back to the one second threshold. That covers the top 15 as they stand right now. So Drace just very much looking focused at trying to keep his momentum rolling through this opening sector. Remember, Roman Edis around a 31-1 or, or something like that. So if you can if you can match that time, it sets you up for a pretty good middle sector. If you can carry that momentum here out of Surtees and on the run in towards the Pilgrims drop, 31.274 for Nico Sonal, 31.347 for Leonard Heidegger. So there are drivers there uh, behind that are looking to try and improve, but no one's really challenging Michael Romanidis just yet. Uh, yeah, we're waiting for the first sector time for Philip Drace coming through Hawthorne's, not seeing anything for him just yet. It doesn't look like there's much in terms of improvement. And yeah, he's not going to improve. He's already slowing down. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is just a blip on the timing, but we're not getting sector times out of him right now. So 60 seconds left in the session. We're just kind of judging from the body language of the car. And it's looked calm. And I always go back to what Top Gear used to say, where, you know, if it looks calm, it looks reserved. It's sometimes quick in machines like this. But he's looking up now, bit of a sigh. Not exactly sure what to expect as he rounds himself out of the final corner. And we did get data that he was three tenths off in the middle sector. And when you're three tenths off to P1, that does not necessarily add up to good things. Let's see what he can do through the final corner. He can't do anything because qualifying's come to an end a second before he hits the line. He wasn't improving anyway, though. And so we saw some drives from pole to victory in semifinals in round one of this Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on race room, powered by Sucker Punch. Can Romanidis convert? Well, the Kawan Esports drivers got Philip Drace, Nico Sonal, and Leonard Heidegger, all within about four tenths of a second, as is Jakub Brzezinski, Turka Hakkinen, Veal Krevy, and then Brandon Hawkin, Nathan Maximin, and Michal Neg round out your top ten, and really, close margins think about what the draft's going to do to keep them close to one another david nemchek and then angelo michelle 11 and 12 positions with Frida braun radislav orbital uh, hassan gellert lucas wallering farak uduai rounding out the top 16 or so as they get a couple of minutes now in this warm-up session with which to work joey that was close margins michael romanidis doesn't look too fussed or concerned about that lap but there's still a long way to go today before uh, we, we can crown our Prodigy Pass winner.
And Michael can rest a little bit. He can deserve some of this calm look because he does have a big margin over the field, at least in terms of raw speed. But once the race comes around, once that draft is introduced, he's not going to be able to run away. He's going to have far more pressure behind him. And you know Philip Drace is going to be aggressive. Sometimes we talk about the rating drivers have individually on simulators. Doesn't necessarily matter as much here, but Philip Drace is a higher race room rating than any other driver in the field. That tells you he's got a lot of reps in this car and potentially at this track on this simulator as well. He's going to be very comfortable even from that second place position. And Philip Drace, one of those drivers with a lot of experience here on race room. Of course, Michael Romanidis bounces around of the sim racing world, former F1 esports driver. And he's really been following along in this racing prodigy adventure. Even saw him uh, across of... Uh, season one, part one, bounce across of all the platforms. So looking forward to seeing what Michael Romanidis can bring to the table from the front today. And of course, he will be looking to make sure he gets a pretty fast lap time onto the board, because as you mentioned, Joey, the Prodigy zippers, something you've got to consider. I mean, that's something they should consider for a merch opportunity. I think I mentioned that last time as well. Sell a nice little Prodigy zipper. I'd, I'd certainly buy that. But also, Michael Romanidis has to win one of these, one of these days. It's literally been almost every single event we've done that he's been in contention. Even in the oval racing events, he's tried to be in contention and tried to win a prodigy pass and he's just come up short every time. But I don't know, I feel I feel the most confident in him today. I think this could be the day where it finally happens. If he can keep everything clean, keep everything together, this could be a glorious day for Michael Romanitas. Remember, May 13th through 15th, it's Prodigy Week Part 2 at the Atlanta Motorsports Park. and. So all of these drivers have circled on the calendar. That warm-up session now officially done and dusted, so they'll get their marching orders to head down to the grid, and we'll get ourselves underway. 24 drivers enter, 12 will advance to the final. The other 12 will be watching on and hoping that either the final round at Mid-Ohio will go their way, or they can achieve sufficient points total in the overall leaderboard, which by the way, today's race does not count for. So this is very much a separate event from the overall leaderboard that the drivers are contending with. We've got 40 seconds to go before we get ourselves underway. Joey, does Michael Romanidis convert from the front? Do we see some action for the lead or are we going to see a bit of a train as people just try and stay inside of the top six without fighting? Well, there's going to be a lot more action. I think we can say that much, but... I don't know how much aggression there's going to be early on. I think we're going to see a little bit of a similar race that we did at Road America during the semifinals where drivers maybe don't really want to fight early on and they're going to be a little bit conservative and fight for it at the end or they're not going to lose too much. Here we go. Lights building. Drivers focus towards the lights. It's time to go for semifinal one in event two of the Prodigy Racing League. Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on race room powered by Sucker Punch. Romanitos will lead us away from the line and it's now that run down in towards turn one before you begin the climb up in towards Druid side by side behind but as expected single file towards the front. Now does Philip Drace go offensive on the run up in towards Druid? Don't think he's going to take that opportunity. He'll instead just run into the bumper of Romanidis, give him a shove as they fight side by side for fourth position behind. That's Heidegger and Brzezinski that slot themselves back into line out of Graham Hill Bend. Nice tidy start for the 24 in semi final one with 20 minutes on the clock. And now there's two things that these drivers have to dodge with. There's three wide almost coming into Surtees. Little bit of contact, little bit of door rubbing between Turka Hakkinen and the number one. And then Heidegger as well, I think, is involved in this pack. These are guys who want to fight early. They want track position. They're almost thinking with an oval racing mindset. Get track position early because it's going to be hard to pass later. And some of the drivers up front, I think, are being a little bit more conservative. Not the case for the battle between fourth and seventh. Oh, going to run very wide uh, is Heidegger there. Comes back into line as uh, Vio Cravey as well as Jakub Brzezinski still alongside and sitting behind Turka Hakkinen's going, where do I even place my car? Every which way you look, these drivers costing each other valuable time. Already the margin between third and fourth position grows to around 1.3 seconds. Big, big blocking coming from that right white machine as they all filter through the corner. Brandon Hawking gets past Nathan Maximan on the run down to the final run. But this is getting absolutely crazy to the inside of Nathan Maxman. I think that might have been Neg, but that's not going to happen. Actually, yes, it does. The number 71 does get to the inside. Late move, aggressive move, but side by side down the start. Finish straight is going to slow them down even more. It's going to make Brandon Hawk and very happy that he gets to try and run away a little bit. But this is so important because this is the battle for the last spot in that top 12, the last transfer spot. It's the battle between about 10th to 15th. All of these guys are going for that last spot. 
And they were three wide in through the opening corner at Paddock Hill, but they got it sorted out. Now leaning on one another as they filter off of the corner. I mean, this is crazy. David Nemchek's part of that fight and behind him, I would believe it's uh, Friday Braun and Angelo Michelle, Lucas Wallering, uh, Farak Udawai, Radoslav Orbital, Hassan Gellert. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And no one's really been dropped from the train just yet. 24 cars for the most part still in one long line, albeit with a couple of gaps here and there. Yeah, the biggest gap is between third and fourth, which is understandable because Romanidis, Drace, and Sonal kept single file and, uh, and didn't fight too hard in the opening laps. Heidegger was busy getting swallowed up by Cravey and Hakkinen and Brzezinski and everybody behind him fighting for those positions. So I think we may see a little bit of a separation here. We'll see a three-car battle for the win, and we'll see a 19-car a battle potentially for every other spot in the top ten. That's the look at Jakub Brzezinski, who's very much focused right now and locked into the task at hand, which is riding behind Turka Hakkinen, and Ville Krevi and Leonard Heidegger. Is he see racing in his kitchen? <laughs> he very well could be. I used to race from uh, inside my living room, which basically meant that, yes, you could go and see into my kitchen as well. But some of these drivers, of course, make do with what they have. And Brzezinski, along with his teammate, uh, Nikodim Wisniewski at G2 Esports, made the switch over from Williams. and really settled them nicely into their new surroundings along with the likes of Isaac Price as well. You can see the margin behind growing ever so slightly. Feed them a little bit more confidence. Will they start to fight again though? Because even if they've lost track of those in front, this is just better grid position for the final. Brzezinski had a look. They're all having looks as behind. They start to run into one another. It's Mihai Neg and Brandon Hawkins going at it. Romania versus Canada. How about that for a World Cup battle? Hawkins going to hang on, though, and he's going to be happy looking ahead of him because Brzezinski, he may be racing from his kitchen because he's cooking something right there. He's been sending it every opportunity he's gotten. He's looking to the inside through Surtees, and I think he has actually uh, he's managed to stay ahead of Brandon Hawkins, but he has managed to continue that fight. Still looking at those two side by side ahead of him with the two Finns going at it, Hakkinen and Cravey. Yeah. And this is the, like you mentioned, where really you've got to focus on because it's that top 12 cutoff where people are going to be focused on. Oh, they've got to be careful here not to run each other too hard. It's going to be a potential to cut back underneath, but single file once again for Mihai Neg as he now slots in behind. Uh, Nathan Maximum allows Nemchek and Braun to close the margin. Angelo Michel, again, the first driver on the outside looking in right now in 13th position. This, though, that looks slightly further back at those just trying to hold on to the train as Franek Sikorsky in 18th spot, directly behind Ian Pfeiffer. Yeah, Sikorsky trying to fly forward like a helicopter, but all these positions are very important. They might not be in the top 12, but if there's trouble up front, how many times have we had late race crashes and calamity with multiple cars involved, and then the driver who was in 16th or 17th or 18th ends up transferring into that last spot in the top 12 and ends up transferring into the final. That's why you've still got to fight so hard for every position. Even if it might look hopeless, you never know what can happen in racing. You never give up until 20 minutes is up. No one with too much damage, at least here, although very, very sideways was that sucker punch car as they roll down out of the corner, look to the inside momentarily behind uh, for what would have been 12th and 13th position. So Friday Braun and uh, Angelo Michel uh, work their way up back towards Surtees and the run on towards uh, Pilgrim Drop and towards Hawthorns and just look how close they are. If you're Friday Braun as well, if you see the sucker punch car in front, David Nemchek make a mistake, you've got to go for it, don't you? You can't really wait around. And so outside for a moment, slinks back to the inside before realizing he won't be alongside enough to force the issue. We get a great look at more of the cameras. Great to be able to filter through the field. How about some racing inspiration for Frieder Braun back there? He's got the he's got the old DTM cars to the left. I think that's uh, Michael Schumacher at the Race of Champions on the right. That's that's some pretty good racing inspiration behind him. Who's your racing hero, Joey? Who's my racing hero? I don't know. That's a good question. Come on, maybe, come on. Maybe maybe, maybe Boris said. It's not. I love I, Boris said because he always. Because he's always thrown around those sort of lower budget cars and was very successful in them. The original road course ringer in NASCAR, win in Montreal. I'll go, I'll go with Boris said. 
I was going to say that you could take any one of our Prodigy Week coaches, basically, and you have a pretty good shout. Now, exactly. Romanidis and Drace have been able to slightly pull away from Nico Sonal, and so now they're going to start to squabble. Here comes Drace up the inside in towards Druids, and as they fall away off the corner, can Romanidis stick around the outside? The answer is no. Change has been made. And it's Drace in the NeedRacing.com car that leads from the Kawanda Esports driver. As behind, there's going to be some changes as well as Brandon Hawking drops out of the top 12. Oof, that is painful for Brandon Hawking. He does get it back going in a straight line, but that looks like that happened through the hairpin. I wonder if there was a little bit of car-to-car -car contact, and that wasn't just a solo incident for Hawking. But I don't know. He's got to keep fighting. And just as he's trying to get back into the rhythm, he's forced side by side with Farouk, who Dowie through Surtees. He's still getting the elbows out and his facial expression hasn't changed one bit. He is still 100 percent business and still fully committed. He wants to get back in that top 12. He's in that MPI machine as they go side by side for, I guess, what is going to be 17th and 18th behind. So that's uh, Pfeiffer and Sikorsky. I really love this camera perspective, by the way, because it just gives you so much insight as to what the driver is really going through. Sometimes you see in sim racing camera angles a lot more of the wheel and overall picture itself, but never too much of the emotions on the face. And Brandon Hawking, not too frustrated right now, knows he just has to get a couple more positions, get himself into a chance to be in the final and he'll have a spot uh, up for grabs at the very least and uh, that's all he's got to work with 20 minute race Joey it's not particularly long we're coming up on the halfway distance point it's not especially long but it, it does kind of feel long when you're in some of these battles Romanidis has probably felt like he's been racing for about 20 minutes right now, but he's still got half of the race to continue fighting, and he's got to do a little bit more research now. How does he go on offense instead of defense? He's been leading the race for the first eight minutes or so, but then there was a formidable racing development, and Philip Drace got by, and now he's got to think back to all of those previous Prodigy events. He's got to think to back to all of the practice he's done today and think about where he can repay the favor and find a weak spot in Philip Drace. Maybe as well, there's a bit of gamesmanship that you have to play, right? Going back to the, the Prodigy Zipper, if you think that Drace is actually faster right now and, you know, being realistic, these cars, they're not really going to get that much faster over the course of the fuel burning off. You're just going fast no matter what. So if he thinks that Philip Drace might actually have a faster one lap speed in race trim, maybe he takes advantage of the draft, gets a faster lap behind, and then takes the lead. You see what I'm saying here, Joey? It's, it's very big brain math that I'm trying to speculate. Michael on. Romanidis is a smart guy. He does wear glasses, but I think that's that's a little bit too galaxy brain even for him. <laughs> it's one of those things where, again, I don't think the driver's really a thing. It's like, that it's like Nobel Prize stuff. Yes. Again, again, drivers probably don't care that much about it, but, but we why, as commentators... That's why we make up the stories. Exactly. We make up the stories to keep it interesting. Uh, Angelo Michel in that grid engineering car, strapped into his rig and strapped into the top 12 right now. It's a decent gap behind to Hassan Gellert, Joey. 2.2 seconds. And so, you know, as we focus back up front and a fight for the lead, Romanid is back alongside and now to the inside. Oh, a little bit of leaning on one another as they try and slide to the left and towards that opening corner change for the lead. But in that battle for 12th, you don't want to see this much fighting because it will just cost them time and bring those behind into the fight. And the happiest driver right now is Nico Sonal because all of that battling just brings him closer to the battle for the front. I think that also gave us an answer to, uh, to is Michael Romanidis doing some galaxy brain stats and falling back? No, I think he's just waiting for another opportunity and he went for it the second he got to the inside and uh, the second he could take that lead back. This is the battle for 12th. It's not the battle for the transfer spot necessarily because you see there is quite a big gap two seconds back to Hassan Gellert but they're side by side again for the lead Arjuna I think every opportunity you get to go for the move to take the lead both of these drivers are going to take there's no more holding back they're learning now as well we've got a 30 minute final you'd expect that there's going to be a bit more fighting there the sucker punch car going to really lean on the SECA machine and now can Nico Sonal try and take advantage no because Philip Drace actually got a pretty good run he slinks back to the inside for a moment door blocked off for him great racing this is what MX5 action is all about what Mazda has joined forces with racing prodigy to promote and look at both drivers not a look of emotion on the face this is top level esports racing as Nico Sonal off to the grass as well as Leonard Heidinger behind. Everybody's pushing. They're finding the limits and maybe finding the limits a little bit too aggressively, but that's going to put Brzezinski side by side with Hacken and Brzezinski's been absolutely cooking over these last few laps. He got by uh, Heidegger, got by Cravey, and now the next driver on his list is Turka Hakkinen. He's going to be in the lead coming across the line, I think, with a little bit of the MX5 side draft. 
If he can keep it highly committed into turn one, that's only about a two second gap up to Nico Sonal. If there's more side by side racing up front, I don't think we can count Jakub Brzezinski from driving all the way to the front. If he can close this off into Druids, he might be in better shape, but it's going to be hacking him back to the inside. Jakub Brzezinski oh, has got to really be careful because there was a bump in towards Druids from the inside line. And now as they work off the corner, Turka Hakkinen momentarily in front, but Brzezinski's having none of it. A bit more leaning between the two drivers. I mean, this is what, again, Mazdas are all about. What great racing we had at Sebring this past weekend as well. Almost upstaging the big 12 hours of Sebring event that still delivered excitement yesterday. As Jakub Brzezinski back into line, quick scratch of the head. Not looking too worried with seven and a half minutes to go. Full contact sports car racing, but that's what these guys were expecting. It's MX5 racing. That's what you've got to do. They get to single file for just a moment. Take a breath. Take a moment to get back in the rhythm because in uh, just a matter of moments, they're going to be going back at it. You already see there. I think that's oh, a little bit of contact between Heidegger and Maximin. They might be single file for the moment, but the second there's one more bobble, the second there's another opportunity to run side by side again, this is not a sign of, of drivers being conservative and being uh, running in single file to build up a little bit of extra speed. They're going to be fighting side by side the second they get the next opportunity. And I hope we see that up front as well at some point, because I do think Philip Drace and Michael Romanides are really putting on a bit of a showcase right now and not even costing each other that much time, all things considered, which is kind of what you want to see. Here we go back towards the two drivers up front as they run their way to the line. 6.30 left on the clock with the lap times being 140s. Oh, I don't want to be quoted on anything, but is that five laps still left, Joey? Four or five? Uh, something like that. Because lap times are about a minute 40. A minute 40 lap times are always confusing because two laps at a minute 40 is exactly three minutes. So two, three minutes is six minutes. One more lap to get over six. Is that five laps to go? That's why I said five initially. So we'll go with it. Five to go. Uh, five laps to try and sort something out if you're outside of the top 12. Now, Brandon Hawkin is in that 12th position right now. He has got a train behind him, and I'm sure the weight of expectations riding over him. We saw Vil Crevy for a moment there. He looks pretty calm. What's the MPI machine thinking right now? It's off and into the grass, and Gellert's going to get on through. And how much momentum has Brandon Hawking lost? Now here comes one more. Fried abroad fires it around the outside. Lost quite a bit, and it's a long straight coming into Hawthorns. He's going to be suffering for that for just a moment. But Surtees is such a difficult corner. It's a lot tighter than you'd expect. And Brandon Hawking carried a little bit too much speed, thought he could get in the throttle earlier than he actually could, and ended up throwing it off the road. But his fight's not over as there goes uh, the, that was Frieder Braun going around on the exit of Westfield. And so suddenly, one more driver in trouble. Brandon Hawking finds himself still with some opportunities, and that was very heads up by Frieder Braun to avoid running back into oncoming traffic and to avoid making that a worse situation. Focus attention back up front now with five minutes officially left to run. The Sucker Punch MX-5 machine of Michael Romaninis fades up high and tries to set something up through Druids. So much rotation on the inside curve for Philip Drace, and we'll see him hold on to the lead as they come up towards that turn two complex once more. But... Joey, you said this was a track that was hard to pass. These drivers have really just put on a show. I must say, this has been great. I think that's why you're seeing everybody get so aggressive, spe specifically because it is so hard to pass. When you get an opportunity, you have to go for it. You can't afford to just ride in line and assume there's going to be an opportunity on the final lap like you could at Road America. When the door opens into Surtees with Latin with no certainty, you do have to go for it. And uh, Michael Romanides does get side by side for just a moment. The run's not there on the inside, though. He's got to find another opportunity to get to the inside. I don't think that's going to come into Hawthorne's, but he saw the opportunity and he took it. That's what you got to do every single time. I thought for a second there that Michael Romanidis was going to try and get to the inside, but he that wasn't really, it was never really on. Nico Sono, by the way, what do you think he's been learning, Joey? Just sitting there waiting patiently, not forcing the issue too much in that white and teal machine. I think what he's actually been hoping is please crash, please crash, please crash, please take each other out. That's exactly what he's hoping from third right now, because that's his main hope, is even as these guys race side by side, even as they rub doors with each other, they're still actually faster than Sonal most of these laps. So he's definitely been learning. He's been probably looking for his opportunities. If he does get close to those three on the final lap, he might have a chance to go for it. But his biggest hope right now is that the uh, aggressive racing between Drace and Romanitas comes to blows and opens the door for him to drive right on through.
Romanidis once again fades up high. Don't think he's really setting it up at this point. Might have to wait for the final lap or so. You ride from the nose perspective of the third place driver, Nico Sonal. Just a little bit of a uh, more aggressive line on entry into the corner. A couple of different approaches to that uh, corner, to be fair. And the different ways that you can think about it. Uh, in these MX-5s, though, you do have relatively high average speeds around the lap, and you do have a lot of commitment as well. And so that's why you're seeing these drivers 20 minutes in, still very much pushing the limits all around. If you're focused on the fight, by the way, for the top 12, Brandon Hawkins hasn't really been able to close on Hassan Gellert just yet. So not really much to talk about in a fight there. But with three minutes, under three minutes to go, Joey, desperation is going to start showing in that fight. And there was desperation right there trying to make a move around the outside into Hawthorne's does not really work. The laws of physics don't really allow it. And Romanidis was not truly side by side through there, but he is looking for an opening through Westfield. It's a high speed, almost like a 75 degree corner. It's so, so wide open. And then again, the same corner here, big curb, wide open corner, grass on the exit. And then through Sterling's it's perfectly 90 degrees. All of those are mistake generators. If the driver in front of you goes slightly wide, the door will be open, but Drace was perfect on that lap. Not a single mistake to open any opening for Mike Romanides to come through. Ooh, bit of grass being picked up there. Just a bit more aggressive on the entry into the corner. So it will officially be one, two Maybe. laps. It's I, it a race should, against the clock. It should be one lap to go, but I have absolutely no certainty in saying that. But three within half a second for the lead it's been great in this first semi-final and really expectations set high to the outside goes romanidis so setting it up potentially on the run down in towards graham hill ben but philip drace has been absorbing that pressure perfectly nothing really to be concerned about brandon hawking has gotten in front of hassan gallup by the way not sure if there was a mistake but there's been a change in that top 12 battle and heidegger's falling down the order as well that could open up another opportunity in the top 12 there is leonard turned around on the exit of the, at the exit of the Druid's hairpin. He's got going again in P11, so he is actually safe, but just barely. And if there's any damage on that car, he could be in trouble. But Michael Romanidis in second, he doesn't know if this is the final lap or not. So he has to pounce the second he gets that opportunity. He could get lucky. They could take the white flag at the line, but he doesn't know if that's happening and he's going for it in the outside of Hawthorns. That's a brave place to leave yourself, Nico Sono bumper to the back of Romanidis' sucker punch entry, who did shove the SCCA machine through the corner. Now defensive for Drace on the run up in towards Sheen Curve to Sterling's and then clearways to run after this. Two more braking zones, if you can even really call this one that. Romanidis sends it and slides his car around. He'll hang on and hang on to a spot inside of the top three as well. But what drama to close the semi-final. And you could tell the pole position clearly meant something to Michael Romanidis in the final. But Philip Drace will win in semi-final one in round two of the Prodigy Racing League MX5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. And he does officially, checkered flag was out. And yeah, Michael Romanidis, he did what he had to do. He sent it, didn't quite work out for him. He's still gonna make the final. I do wonder if he's gonna be slightly ruining that because Nico Sonal up into second. That means that Michael Romanidis, instead of starting third or fourth, he's gonna start fifth or sixth. That doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot when, you've, when you're at a place like Brands Hatch where it's that much more difficult to pass. No emotion, by the way, after that win from Philip Drace. Just a quick sip of the water. Ready to go in a, in about, what, two hours time or something for the something for, like for the final later today? Chill up, Drace. Calling that from now on. That's not a bad one. Joey, you're, you're usually quite uh, bad with your puns, but I'll give you that. That was good. It's a good nickname for me. You can put that on T-shirts. You can sell that to the uh, the needracing.com fans, <laughs> but he'll, he'll definitely be the favorite this time out. He was fast at Road America, fast here again. But I don't even know. What are we going to see in the second semifinal now? This one was crazy enough, and all those drivers have gotten the opportunity to see this. They've learned where the best passing opportunities are. They've learned you can get a little bit aggressive and rub fenders. I'm so excited for the next semifinal. Maybe we shouldn't have been surprised for Philip Drace. He did win the Race Room Mazda MX-5 Cup Season 1 um, and has had a couple of those official rank championship wins on Race Room in this car. Let's see what he can do. 20 minutes of racing and just over 20 minutes as well. No Rolex 24 situation from earlier this year. One and a bit seconds back for Nico Sonal and then Michael Romanidis. A move 
A desperate move, maybe, but a good move nonetheless. One that we wanted to see, and it still gives him a third uh, row starting spot in the final. Hakkinen, Brzezinski, Kravy, Maxman, Nez, uh, Nemchek, Michel, uh, Heidegger, and Hawking. Those will be the 12 that advance to the final, but unfortunately done for this round two and focusing their attention on round three that starts in a few hours at Mid-Ohio. The rest of the field, Sikorsky, Gellert, Orbital, uh, Pfeiffer, Udoi, Wallering, Leipold, uh, Lurga, Braun, uh, Van Locke, and the rest. So that was... The first of two 20-minute semi-finals. And uh, Joey, as we take a quick breath, we get the drivers out on track for qualifying in that second semi-final. I think it's time for us to talk a little bit about our pickles, because I have got many a pickle over my shoulder. You've got the Sucker Punch Hydration pickle juice, uh, the, the exhilarating pepper flavor. I also have the invigorating dill flavor. Ooh, that's a big deal right there. Am I going to open it. an exhilarating pepper on camera? I might have to. I hope I can do actually it, open this bottle because that'll be so embarrassing if I can't. Do I have do the uh, arm strength to do it? Yes, I do. It's actually a very easy bottle to open. Let's get a smell smell test. While he does that, I will also show off. Oh, no. Back to Joey. Back to Joey. That's definitely pickle juice. Oh, I, can, I get the exhilarating pepper already. Oh, nice. Uh, I also do have the classic Ooh. kosher dill pickle pack. Ooh. Um, ooh, indeed. And then, of course, I still have the fiery heat. Three. Is it going to focus? There we go. Beautiful. Yes. All the pepper products. Uh, we have been pickled up, as you can see, over my shoulder. I have a supermarket worth of indie car parts. Fantastic. And Sucker Punch pickle stuff. What more could you ask for, Joey? What I more could, could I you ask? I could not ask for anything more. And I do have to apologize for anything I say in the next semifinal because I've been I've been hypercharged by this exhilarating pepper. I might go totally insane coming up. You have been exhilarated by the pepper. I must say, by the way, the packaging is fantastic. As yeah. was uh, my impression of the person on the on the bottle here. I've got to get myself in in camera. There you go. Look at this. You're gonna Very get hired. I mean, I hope so. I I, I, I modeled before, uh, but not for anything good. <laughs> The old pickle model. That's good stuff. That's, uh, highly, that's highly rated in the modeling world. If you get to the pickle level, that's like, that's the highest level. Yeah, you've got foot models, uh, feet models, uh, foot, feet models, hand models, and then pickle models. That's the, that's the, whatever you call it, pyramid of, of modeling. I could do the, the rotating thing. I could be like Ooh, a, QVC kind QVC, of. QVC, exactly. Picked up what for you're the, putting down. For the low price of seven hundred ninety nine ninety nine. call in. And get your sucker punch, hydration, pickle juice with electrolytes, yeah. exhilarating pepper. It, 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 it's uh, I actually don't know how much the pickle juice shooters cost. What I do know is probably about 150, 150 times less than what I said. <laughs> These are seven ninety nine at your local Whole Foods and and uh, Amazon uh, because yes. You can buy them on Amazon. Also, give a big shout out, by the way, as mentioned, Mazda providing $2,500 in coaching vouchers for the Racing Prodigy Coaching Marketplace. And by the way, even if you don't make it to these finals for each of the race room tournaments, the top 25 in the series in points are eligible to win a SimLab P1X Pro Sim Racing Cockpit. Some of those Mazda uh, Racing Prodigy Coaching Marketplace uh, vouchers as well as well as advanced sim racing gift cards and advanced motorsports coaching gift cards. So always for Joey drivers to upskill themselves and build themselves up for the rest of the tournaments that we've got coming up, even if you aren't part of Prodigy Week Part 2, there's still plenty more in the pipeline for 2024. And that's good stuff. If I were to turn around here, run past the Atlanta Motorsports Park, go back home and uh, look at my sim rig, I could definitely use all of those upgrades, but that would require me being fast enough to participate, Arjuna. I'm no racing prodigy. We're just here in the booth. So uh, I might have to I might have to go to advanced motorsports school if I want any hope to doing that. Yeah, I unfortunately wrote uh, said some things during the build up to Prodigy Week Part One that uh, meant that I may have committed they promised that I was going to run around the Atlanta Motorsports Park. Yes, now, the schedule yes, was yes. so busy in Prodigy Week Part 1, as everyone at the team can attest to, that we never had a chance for me to actually go on to track sure, and do the run. Sure. Um, we Just have, take an exhilarating pepper. it will give you the power. Well, it'll take you around there. Joey, I, I regret to inform you, or maybe I regret to inform me, that we're already having discussions about how to make sure we slip that into the schedule. Behind the scenes at Racing Prodigy, we have a new social media person as well. So if you see some fun content, give a shout out to Sam. The problem is, Joey, I've been told he's a runner. 
I'm not a runner. Uh, that's not good. Although you're, how tall is Sam? Do we know this? Six. I'm six foot five. So if Sam is three three, then every two steps he takes is probably a exactly. step of mine. That's the only be your, way it's fair. Yeah, that'll be how you win. You just need a very very big handicap there. No qualifying already in the books for semi-final two. So let's quickly run you down through how they'll line up because we want to focus on this as well, of course. Uh, Leandro Werla going to be fastest on the ball. And he also breaks into the 38s. That's faster than Roman Ias, if I can remember. And then Kamil P uh, Poloski second. Enzo Filippo third. And then Martin Barna, Patrick Shari uh, fourth and fifth positions. Christian Orban and then uh, Ivan Fornas is going to line up behind Matai uh, Markovic. And then you go down to Kamto Chukwera. Uh, Tiago Mello, who has already got plenty of fans in the chat. Dennis Schoeniger joins us for Williams Esports. And then Sven De Vries, Carlos Ocono, and then Martin Havlana round out through the rest of your top 14 or 15 or so. I mean, Joey, only a quick look there. Interesting to see, though, that we did get a faster time than what Romanidis was able to do in qualifying. And one name you didn't get to, Arjuna, was the uh, driver who starts in 16th, Ellis Costello. How about that for a name? Ellis Costello will be racing with us in uh, in semifinal number two. That's good stuff. There that he is. is. There's Ellis Costello. Oliver's army is here to stay. Uh, not to be confused by Elvis with Elvis Costello, by the way, uh, if you were curious. Uh, no, no similarities uh, intended there. I'm just looking through the rest of this entry list because we got thrown straight into qualifying and trying to figure out uh, surprises there. Maybe a bit surprised to see Dennis Schoeniger so low in the field, but again, we got a lot of repeat drivers that have joined us once again, coming out of that first round at Road America. That Joey will, I think, at least be familiar with this format of competition, the way that the qualifying and then the, the semi-final and final works. At the front, though, Wurla, P uh, Pavlovsky, uh, Filippo, should we probably expect something similar from what we saw between uh, Philip Drace, Michael Romanidis, and Nico Sono? Yes, is the answer to that. I think Leandro Werla and Enzo Filippo were so strong at Road America, and I can only imagine they're going to be just as strong today. So judging by the fact that the two strongest drivers that didn't advance were the strongest drivers at Brands Hatch, I think that's going to be the same in this uh, in this semifinal as well. But maybe there could be an underdog. Maybe Martin Barna, who was sort of in the midfield, sort of around at Road America. Maybe the, uh, the higher speeds and the higher commitments of Brands Hatch, maybe they fit him just that little bit more. Yeah, there's a look at Camto Chukwera, who has been part of a couple of our search selection committee uh, top 20s. So focus and locked in on the task at hand out of Ireland. One thing I do like, by the way, about Race Room is that we get all the, the countries on the timing tower so you can really see the true international flair that we have uh, here at Racing Prodigy. It is an international journey to bring sim racing prodigies the opportunities to go racing and let's not forget the goal what we're all building towards here at racing prodigy with prodigy week part two is hopefully later in 2024 the very first prodigy draft building up to the first hopeful prodigy racing league real world series oh it's going to be a lot of fun may 13th to get ready for three days of prodigy week action at the atlanta motorsports park Ready to go, though, here for semi-final two. Drivers getting the final moments. Joey, will any of them be watching semi-final one and maybe have learned a couple of things from that? They definitely were watching. They were probably focusing a little bit of time to practicing, but I think they know that it's going to be tough to pass. You're going to have to get just as aggressive as Romanidis and Philip Drace were if you're going to want any hope of winning or advancing for that matter. Here we go. Time for semi-final two. 20 more minutes on the clock. 24 enter, 12 advance. It's round two, semi-final two of the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. Away we go, and Whirler with a great jump to lead us down in towards the Paddock Hill bend. Pavlovsky, though, instantly to the outside, not thinking he's going to challenge by any means, but just trying to tuck into line and get the best run out of the corner to set something up on the climb up towards Druids. Barna and Philip are fighting behind as the long Long way around for Pavlovsky. He's going to run out of road eventually and single fall off of turn two. The top 10 will work. And another thing these drivers should have hopefully learned from the previous semifinal is you do have to be careful about fighting hard on lap one because we saw a three car breakaway with uh, just those top three with Sonal Romanidis and, uh, and the race winner. But that's a spin in the back. Unfortunately, it was almost entirely clean. But uh, I think Melvin Brandt has been the lone loser after uh, after turn two. He's gone around.
Seems like uh, Sir Widerick as well, unfortunately, has had some technical issues, so we may not see him out on track. There's Thiago Mello inside of the top 12 for all the fans that are watching on and cheering him on. I'm sure the Brazilian contingent will be hoping to send another Brazilian over to the Atlanta Motorsports Park after Gustavo Ariel really did uh, impress many with his performance all the way through Prodigy Week. Not, last, uh, not least, though, in the last event of the week with the chase competition that we had. He's really, though, in the midst of the fight right now. Sven de Vries, Martin Havlana, Carlos Okoto, uh, Ellis Costello. That's the train that sits behind. And this is going to be the most exciting stuff to watch on the track. There's a little bit more of a train up front, though. It's not just that three-car battle that we saw in semifinal one. You've got Leandro, who's leading the way. He's actually pulled away a little bit, five-tenths over these two. But if they're smart, Pavlovsky can be in the battle for the win. Filippo can be in the battle for the win. Martin Barna could be in the battle for the win from fourth. And even if you go all the way to the back of this train, maybe even back to P10, all of those drivers and all of those cars are still within draft range. But how early do they decide to fight with each other? That's going to decide how early we start to break up this train and, uh, and form some smaller packs. Yep, the Mirror Esports driver in the MPI machine sits in third. See if there is going to be a bit of a breakaway that starts to form. Back over to the heart of the action where Tiago Mello still sits in 11th. There's a bit more chopping and changing in front though of Carlos Ocono as we cycle out of Surtees one more time. They're gonna eventually get single file as the sucker punch car that we're focused on rides its way through side by side in front though. That's uh, going to be for sixth and seventh position between Markovic and Orban. Single file once more. Definitely not a uh, building as intensely right now as we saw in semi-final one, but I think that's also in some ways because, Joey, these drivers want to lose the draft in front. No, but eventually you do just kind of have to go for your opportunities, and that's what we were seeing there with the two Hungarians going at it. I don't know if they're necessarily thinking about winning this race now as those top four have started to run away. Is this finally the crossover point where... You're not thinking about staying in that train anymore, and you are thinking about fighting for every position. Chari throws it off the road through uh, Sterling's. Orban does as well. That could open the door for uh, Markovic to come through. Doesn't quite open the door, but that orange and white car of, uh, of Mattia is definitely going to be looking for his next opportunity now that they've almost lost Chari in front. Yeah, it's definitely starting to be a bit of a breakaway. Draft not totally broken, but getting to that threshold. It's uh, effectively still four at the front that will continue to work as they file out of turn one a little bit wide for the lead driver in that train as they run up the hill. You can see the moves being sent from behind and a big lunge up the inside in the grid engineering machine. Came a bit out of nowhere as we get a, uh, well, tilt your head and you can look at Matar Markovic. That's just how cameras are in Montenegro. That's okay. You can see that the hands relatively smooth, though. As much as you do work, you need quick hands, uh, much like Pato Award, to, to drive these cars. You, you kind of want to be smooth. You don't want to be wrestling them around too much. That will lose you some momentum as Sven de Vries gets in front of Thiago Mello and puts him down in that 12th position right on the bubble. And Mattia Markovic may have the uh, the whole of Montenegro on his back, but Sven de Vries and Carlos Ocano, they're representing the United States in these semifinals. The U.S. drivers haven't had the most success in the uh, in the previous event, but now both of these guys looking for their transfer spots into the final and looking to uh, represent their country at least. Here is Carlos Ocano. He's got that big setup, nice chair. He's got the round, smaller wheel, and uh, he's very, very busy pumping, pumping it up with Ellis Costello. Oh, and there's the door that's, open. That's immediately one of those drivers feeling a little bit better about the situation because I think that was Martin Havlana that ran a bit wide and bleeding's going to continue. Ferris Krippendorf going to be trying to challenge into the final corner on the track as we close now on five minutes complete. 15 still left to go. Chopping and changing action starting to build, but not yet at the front where Leandro Whirl actually might even be trying to break away now. Six tenths is that margin as out of turn one they plunge and then rise. Pavlovsky, Barna, Filippo still very close as that ch the chopping and changing in this fight for seventh continues to come on. Christian Orban on the outside and going to lose out as well. Markovic gets the elbows out. A little bit of a bumper to Orban. And side by side, coming down the hill, Orban is going to be able to slot back in line in front of Ivan Fornes. But look at these blocks. We've been seeing these all day. It's just kind of what you have to do. If you want to make sure that door isn't open, all you can really do is block all the way down to the bottom of the track. Hope that you can get the car stopped to not open the door on exit. 
This has been a school in defensive driving. It's been an experiment in defensive driving, so I hope you've been practicing in racing conditions because it's been some of the most defensive driving we've seen almost ever in any of these events. Still, that fight for 12th, not that close though. Tiago Mello's got some margin to Carlos Ocono. It's one and a half seconds, and so until that starts to close, don't expect the action to rise. Ivan Fornes, who has had plenty of support of his own in the racing prodigy chats over some of the tournaments since in eighth position. It's just, again, just remind you of the racing prodigy zipper. The fastest race lap for each of these drivers will get compared against the fastest race lap for the drivers that will start on the same row. Whoever has the fastest race lap starts on what you would assume is a slightly better starting on the inside line, slightly better starting position. But I'll be honest, Joey, I'm thinking about it right now based on how these starts have gone. The only place that you really care about starting is whether you're first or second. Pretty much. That's that's the most important thing. Other than that, being on the inside into turn one and being on the inside into the hairpin are, are pretty good. But with how staggered these starts are, it's not like a rolling start where you're directly side by side with another car. It is a standing start where you're staggered. So inside outside doesn't really matter. It's just every position that matters. And uh, that's why you're seeing everybody fighting so hard here. Dennis Schoeniger, last spots in the top 10. He's trying to get through on Orban. Orban couldn't block him, but they're gonna be three wide into Surtees for a moment. Ooh, he's gonna get the best of this one. The SimLab car going to get off the corner just directly in front. So Ivan Fornes holds off Schoeniger, but Orban, Chukwera, Sven de Vries, Thiago Mello, all still there, and Mello's being smart. He's just saying, you know what? You go two by two on the run up towards Hawthorns. I'll back out of it. If one of you's in the grass, I'll take advantage. There's a sucker punch car on the outside that might get dropped down to 11th. Not sure if it's really going to play out side by side on the exit now out of Westfield in towards Dingle Dell. And Thiago Mello saw an opportunity, takes advantage. Camto Chukwera down to 12th. He gets to breathe a little bit because he's got about a second and a half back to Carlos Acano and back to Ellis Costello. But if he gets into any more trouble, if he throws it off the road, if he runs side by side, Carlos is right there and ready to pounce. There is Comto in the bottom of your screen. Looks totally calm, just as every driver in this field has. I don't. I, that is just a sim racing thing, Arjuna, that all the drivers are, are pretty used to this. They look pretty calm, but I just want one guy who's just totally sweating, who looks totally nervous and is still succeeding, but there's not a single one. I want to make a terrible pun. I'm just, I'm, I'm prefacing what I'm about to say by calling it a terrible pun. Kanto Chukwera. Yes, there you go. I was expecting you to go it. somewhere with like sweaty, sweaty sim racers who try too hard, but Kanto no. Chukwera, that's good. I'm, I'm proud of you. No, you see, Joe, when I make puns, they're good. That is mainly because they're not very often. I have to think about them very hard. Um, finally crafted. Exactly. Um, they're, you get they're, one extra pickle tonight. Congratulations. It, it's like last week tonight versus The Daily Show. Potentially. It, 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 it's the only comparison I can have. You get, you, you're, you're here every day. You're open for business. I'm only open once a week. And, and even then, let's be honest, only half the year anyway. Uh, Dennis Schottiger is going to try and find a way past Ivan Fornes with two seconds or so now up to sixth position as they work now almost halfway through this race. Leandro Werler, Kamil Polovsky and Martin Barner haven't really put too much pressure on one another, but they have dropped Enzo Filippo. So, you know, we saw so much chopping and changing at the front of the field in semi-final one. Don't get that same impression right here. Although in terms of pace, Joey, I do feel as though Leandro Werler was faster in qualifying, but not too far separated from the speed that we saw earlier. Now, he did a good job in the opening laps to keep that gap fairly extended, but you can only uh, you can only hold back the draft for so long. And when you have a driver within about five tenths of you, they're going to be able to catch you if they can just keep consistent and keep that momentum up. And uh, Pavlovsky's done exactly that. Sven de Vries, though, this is kind of, uh, it's an international battle. It's a nationality battle. You got a lot of Brazilian fans of Tiago Melo cheering him on. The Americans are cheering on Sven de Vries. The Germans are here for Dennis and, and the Hungarians representing to get two of their guys in the top 12 with uh, Orban in this fight as well. And Ireland with Kamto Chukwera as well. This is, this is the World Cup of Prodigy Racing today. Uh, we, we've got it all. And again, Prodigy Week Part 1 was truly international. Uh, can't wait to see what we have in store for Prodigy Week Part 2, 57 days away. 
12 winners, nine countries for Prodigy Week Part 1. Jan von der Heide got the call up on 24 hours notice effectively to fly from Germany and make the trip over to Atlanta. Really interesting to see how he performed. The ITB Racing uh, driver though, Camille Plavlovsky, we were taking a look at his webcam slightly earlier on just before the race. Had a handbrake next to him, hoping that he's not going to need to <laughs> use that here today, but he's closed that margin. Starting to build up speed in the second half of semi-final two. And he's totally in the zone. He's got the monitor very high. That's that's interesting. I feel you don't normally see drivers looking up at their monitor, but he's he's very clearly looking up at an angle to uh, to see his monitor. Yeah, I. It, it, you know what it is. His legs are a little bit higher, so he's in a bit more of a formula seating position than I think a lot of people would be in. You know, a traditional GT sort of a cockpit. But maybe uh, he's like seven feet tall, and he has to do that. No, maybe he's, he's like definitely. He's definitely not seven feet tall because there's only one sim racing driver that is that tall and his name is Yuri Kastorp. And for, just for saying that, I might have just been banned on Twitter. Sorry, Yuri, I just had to mention it. Anyway, side by side, Dennis Schonner gets past Ivan Fornes, who got the rear end hanging out of Paddock Hill Bend and now watches around the outside as moves are going to be made, chopping and changing once more. Watch for the Sucker Punch car. This time of Kamto Chukwara just sit there and watch for his chance to take advantage on the run out of Graham Hill Bend. Comto had one of his family members checking in in the YouTube chat saying that, as always, totally calm, collected, and uh, he can keep it moving. So he is uh, he's doing exactly that. Single file. It's a six car train now. But this is one of those things we saw in the previous semifinal. You can stratify out to be one by one by one for just a moment and it'll look a little bit calm, but that doesn't last for very long. Those opportunities are going to come again. Those doors are going to open again and they're open again up front now because Pavlovsky is 100% committed. He's not going to lose the draft now that he's in with about two tenths of, uh, of the leader and he's looking for an opening. He's trying to find his way to the inside, but that was never really on. It was a late lunge to the inside through Dingle Dell. What do you think ITB stands for in the world of sim racing, Joey? What does ITB stand for? Is it in the barrier? No, that was basically where I was going with it, though. You'd think maybe in the barriers. No, ITB esports team based out of the UK from a Counter-Strike background into the breach. And that was Kamil Pavlovsky trying to get into places that really you don't want to get into. Now, they pulled away from those behind. Enzo Filippo has been passed by Martin Barna. It's just these two with six and a half minutes to go. There's a lot of those sim racing teams that have the connections to the uh, the first person shooters and the, the sort of video game video games, we could say, instead of the racing simulators. I wonder if any of those skills cross because there's there's hand eye coordination. There's being quick on your feet and making little split second decisions. Who well, knows? I would present to you case in point. Uh, certain Crim6, uh, potentially the best Call of Duty player to have ever lived. Uh, now I'm not a Call of Duty aficionado. That is just what I'm told. It's 20 time world champion or something in the world of Call of Duty, who not only has competed at the top level of sim racing, won his very first professional race in the Porsche Sprint Challenge North America, uh, not a couple of weeks ago. Now back onto this action though, because Fender Freeze in this fight just inside of the top 12 as as a pass between Thiago Mello, who gets past uh, Christian Orban. Now comes Chuck Guerra trying to find his way on through. If you're being smart, though, here, Joey, none of these drivers should be fighting too hard because they Whoa. got a gap to Carlos Ocono, who's now going to take advantage of a mistake there. That was Orban going around, and that was a crash that lasted about 30 seconds. He got sideways entering the corner, saved it, got sideways exiting the corner, and ended up in the Armco on the exit. And that is very unfortunate for Christian Orban. He's having a great day, getting very aggressive, but... Unfortunately, it's all come undone for him. That promotes Carlos Ocano into the top 12, and Ocano has a four-second lead over 13th. That's a very comfortable position with only five minutes to go. A couple of these drivers are taking some liberties with uh, grass and whatnot. Doesn't seem to slow them down too much, but maybe unsettles the car uh, in some of these battles. Ferris Krippendorf just outside of the top 12 consideration, and at this time, wouldn't expect that Carlos Ocono would have expected that gift to be presented to him, but he might be starting on row 12, the final row of the final that will begin around 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. So if you're watching us right now on the Racing Prodigy YouTube channel, this will come to an end in around 10 minutes time. We'll finish up this race, maybe catch up with some of the drivers and then wrap things up. Be back with more fresh action 
30 minutes of racing, a Prodigy Pass to be handed out. So join us again on the Racing Prodigy YouTube channel at around 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Four minutes to go, though, short time left in this one. And that fight for eighth on back has really started to separate out. There's been a change for the lead as well as they battle for some of those spots at the end of the field. They're going to battle it out for uh, for 20th place here between Gabriele De Palma and uh, and Guillaume Blanc as well. But Pavlovsky's taken the lead back. There was a mistake a couple of laps ago from Verla, I think, fell back about half a second. He has managed to bring it back. He will still be in the fight to the end. But I think that might have been the first little bobble from Verla that we've seen all day. And so, at least as it stands right now, if we were to see the checkered flag at the line, it would be the drivers that started in second uh, in respective semi-finals that would be on the front row and the pole position sitters would share row number two. Interesting to see. I, I get the sense though, Joey, it's it's potentially down to four. Given what we've seen so far, I mean, Martin Barna, Enzo Filippo starting to close once again as we ride on board with Leandro Werler over the curb at turn number one, but very much Philip Drace, uh, along with Michael Romanidis, and then uh, Pavlovsky and Werler have been the class of the field. Nico Sonal, though, could very much prove me wrong. He could, and these two are going to fight very, very hard here in these closing minutes. And I, I somewhat jokingly mentioned that Nico Sonal in that previous semifinal was hoping the two in front of him would crash. But that's also a hope for Martin Barna and for Filippo and for Chari as well. If these two get the elbows out in the final lap and come together like Romanitas did with uh, Philip Drace, he just got away with it. That could open the door for some uh, some underdogs to move their way forward and potentially force these two to uh, pull off a bigger comeback tomorrow. So they do have to be careful not to get too aggressive and take each other out in these final laps. I mean, they're, they're running some interesting lines, but I think that's more just the, the way that these Mazdas do end up racing, the level of commitment that you need. Side by side for third. Enzo Filippo, the, the Frenchman slides past Martin Barna. And I wonder if this is now just going to keep them exactly where they are. You can see the left side of the screen really hasn't been too much chopping and changing. And only... Uh, I was trying to figure out how many drivers from outside of the top 12 in qualifying were going to end up advancing. Seems as though only a one or two. This has definitely not been as crazy of a race in many ways as that first semi-final. Although, I think we're going to get a bit more clarity around how many more laps we get in this respective semi-final. Because at the line, 141. Is it two laps to go? Oh, I have no idea. That's for you to decide, Arjuna. That's for you to decide coming through the final corner. I think we can only wait for that. But Leandro probably has the same confusion behind the wheel right now. Same thing Michael Romanis Romanidis was thinking last time. He's got to pounce. He gets to the inside into Druids. Doesn't quite get the exit, though. If this is the final lap, if this is the second to last lap, it doesn't matter. Leandro needs to take the lead now, just in case it is the final lap. Yeah, he definitely went for it there. Was no holding back. I'm not entirely sure is the answer. I felt confident coming out of the final quarter in semi-final one. That was the end. I have no, I have no idea this time by. Not expecting again a fight inside of the top 12. I will just let you know, Tiago Melo has been caught by Carlos Ocono. They may swap around, but that will just impact in which row they start for the final. Top 12 again, remember, locked in. Now, can they get locked in through this middle sector? Pavlovsky covers very slightly. Whirler's right there, though. I don't know. We may get one more here, Joey. I get that inkling. Well, coming into Michael Romanita's corner here in two more corners, that's going to be the real test as Whirl ascended. He's got a great exit there through the third to last corner. The door is not open to the inside. Sending it in, though, is Pavlovsky. He's going to hold on to the lead. But now it's just a race against the clock. Whirl is desperately hoping there is one more lap because he needs another opportunity. But uh, checkered flag comes out. Well fought by Pavlovsky to uh, take this at the end. Well, we definitely have had 20 minutes of racing, right? Right? Clock ticks down. It's not quite struck zero. We're going to get one more lap here. Here comes the challenge to the outside from Leandro Whirler. Tries to switch back underneath in the Acid X Simsport car, but not able to get to the inside. Now, the into the breach car is going to have to give the inside line here. We won't have the chance to cover it off. So onto the brakes through Druids. It's the chance for some more door-to-door -door contact, for some leaning for Whirler to get back to the lead, but still side-by-side -side into Graham Hill Bend. Final lap of this one. 
This is all getting very, very dicey. Every corner they're making contact. They're using every little bit of bumping ability that these MX-5s have. Pavlovsky forced down into second, but that might not be a terrible thing. He's going to get a better run at a Surtees here. He's forced out wide onto the curb, onto the grass, but he's going to have a fantastic run in the draft here if the door is open coming into Hawthorns. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be the middle, the, the final sector. If there is going to be a move, Leandro Werler timed that perfectly. I think he knew there was one more lap. Didn't go too aggressive because he could have forced the issue a lap ago. You can see behind Enzo Filippo has dropped Martin Barna as well. So he's making a case to be counted, by the way, come the final itself. 30 minutes of racing. Maybe he'll be a little bit stronger towards the end when the tires come back towards him. Just now got to get through Sterling. This is where some lunges were made in semi-final one. Not going to be made this time around. He's got one more shot into the final corner. I don't know if it's a good enough exit to go for it, but Pavlovsky needs to find every last bit of braking ability he has. I think he knows he's not quite close enough to make it happen. And uh, Leandro Werla made it happen when it counts. We've been treated to a spectacle, though, in these semi-finals. Leandro Whirl is not going to have too much of re a reaction for us, surely, because while victory in semi-final one is good, it's victory in the final he's searching for. Whirl up of Lossky split by a tenth of a second at the line. Take a sip of water. Take a breath as well. Leandro Whirler, winner in the Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. Get hydrated. You're going to need it. Remember, Philip Drace had those uh, DTM cars in the background. Well, Leandro has the stock car Brazil in the background as well. Both of them racing inspiration. And now he can take the headphones off, breathe a little bit. He was looking a little bit shiny and sweaty there. Maybe get a towel, clean himself off. But lots of very... Oh, there it is. Just as I say that. Look at that. I called it. Right on. I mean, I must say that looks like it's a, a, a warm sim room. We'll grab a look at the results. Fastest lap ended up going to Pavlovsky, but only by about a tenth and a half. We're just kind of curious about that. It is the Visceral Esports driver, Leandro Worler, that wins by only a tenth of a half. And Camille Pavlovsky put on a show for us. Enzo Filippo showed up strong in the closing stages. He'll be trying to close in that virtual drivers by TX3 machine. And then Barna, Shari, Markovic, Schoeniger, DeFries, Fornes, Chukwera, Melo, Okano. Those are the 12 that will do battle in the final again. 3.30 p.m. Eastern today. Behind them, unfortunately, for Flana, Costello, Bert, Krippendorf, Orban, Almeida, Brant Blanc, De Palma, and one more driver. Unfortunately, 12 that we say goodbye to. And now, Joey, I kind of don't mind that we get about an hour and a bit here between the semifinals finishing and the finals because my heart rate can come down, my adrenaline can dissipate, and we can get ready to go for the 30 minutes of racing. A little bit of a break. Go get your breakfast or your lunch or your dinner. Maybe chug a couple of uh, a couple of pickle juices if you want. Have a pickle breakfast like I did last time, and it'll be a, a great time. And also something I neglected to mention, today is March 17th. Today is St. Patrick's Day. So how fitting that the Irish driver, Compto Chukwuro, would be so successful. So enjoy a free hour of your, of your St. Patrick's Day, and uh, we'll get back going here in an hour and a half or so. Yeah, but he hasn't been able to really enjoy St. Patrick's Day because he had to be focused on the task at hand. Uh, if you just joining us and you missed some of the chat that we had during the semifinals, those are 20 minute races. This is a 30 minute race. How is the grid set? Well, we're not qualifying again. Joey, it's all back to the Prodigy Zipper. It all is indeed. Just draw it down. Driver who won the uh, the first heat, Philip Drace. Driver who won the second heat, they'll be side by side. And whoever set the fastest lap between the two of them will start first. And then that goes for every single row all the way down to row number 12. It is the Prodigy Zipper. Does it matter too much? I'm not sure, because I know we're going to be looking at those top four all race long in those next 30 minutes. Those are going to be the big four to, uh, to watch fighting. 30 minutes of racing, you might say, you know, there's 10 minutes more to put on the tires, but when in a car like this, I don't think that's really the limiting factor. Joey, the limiting factor is how much time you lose while fighting to bring those in behind you. So it may end up being a bit like a Formula E race in some ways, right? Like the, the you settle in for the first 10 to 15 minutes and then the final 10 minutes, that's when things really go haywire. And hopefully we don't lose our voice like poor Tom Brooks did this past weekend. I'll try my best. That is how it's kind of like it's it's cycling style racing. It's like the Peloton. And then in the last couple of meters, you push and you go for the win. But we didn't really see that in the semifinals. We saw that in the semifinals at Road America. But at Brands Hatch, you saw 100 percent aggression. You saw the importance of track position. 
I wonder if maybe there was a little bit of learning from these semifinals that you don't maybe need to go that aggressive early on and you can still stay in the draft and it is a little bit easier to pass than we thought. But those are all things that all of these drivers are going to be thinking about for the next hour or so and getting ready to hopefully win a Prodigy Pass today. And if you're joining us thinking, oh, I'd like to join in on the fun, don't forget in just a few hours time, round three in the final round of this uh, Golden Ticket MX-5 Cup Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch, will get underway from mid-Ohio. So jump on to RacingProdigy.com. Get your Race Room Game Pass for just $15, $14.99. It gets you into every Race Room Prodigy Racing League event for the next 12 months. A chance for you to be part of this Prodigy Racing League adventure. Don't think we're going to get the chance here to chat to any of the semi-finalists. I think they are very much focused on the next hour of rest and then the 30 minutes that lie ahead. Don't forget... Racing Prodigy YouTube channel, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll be back here live for the final, handing out the Prodigy Pass and a golden ticket to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. For Joey Tebbin alongside myself, our Junior Kanki Party, we'll see you then.
should have go to this meeting. Yeah. Let me just get a snack first. Snack? I brought a snack. Oh, that's okay. I'm I'm good. I don't know. I got this. <laughs> Told you I brought a snack. There's a better way to eat pickles on the go. Sucker Punch, the snack with a snap. the number of participants who had a shot at this, who wanted to be one of 12 of 60-something thousand. thousand. I mean, that's impressive in and of itself. What a diverse group of drivers. What a diverse group of participants. Just really cool. They should all be very, very proud. around four platforms. I mean, I'm lucky to be here. We might have changed the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the skies. We might have changed the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the skies. Hit for it, dick for it, dark. Give them with the determined. Right in the storm, I focus on rainbow connections like Kermit. The water on my shoulders, it was a burden. Now I don't notice it, everything turning. Everything shifting, doing it different. I'm floating, I'm drifting. Shout out the slums, round the world, we uplifted. Doing the big. We about to change the game. We out here taking names. Let our voices rise. Let them reach the skies. We about to change the game. We out here Every one of them deserves to be there. Celebrating the fact that they were here and a part of this very first ever Prodigy Week for Racing Prodigy, and what a three days it was. And here we go, they're gonna spray it, <laughs> and let's see if they've learned how to spray the champagne. It's time to hand out another golden ticket to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. 57 days from today, it will be all about Prodigy Week Part 2 as 18 drivers land at the Atlanta Motorsports Park ready to prove themselves. And here today in the Prodigy Racing League Master MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch, we'll find out exactly who the third one of those drivers is going to be. Our Juna Kenki Party here and ready to call what's going to be an exhilarating 30-minute final. Brands Hatch, a track known for high average speeds in Mazda MX-5s and high tension in both of our semi-finals. 12 drivers from each have advanced to this final and now put it all on the line with just first receiving an award. Alongside me is Joey Tebbin. And Joey, we really talked about passing maybe being difficult. And while passing wasn't necessarily difficult, I think breaking away was what was difficult. And we talked about it in the conclusion to our semifinals. We don't know if there's gonna be a breakaway runaway pack here in this final. There's four drivers that come into this final as sort of the favorites. Michael Romanidis, Philip Drace, Leando Werla, and Enzo Filippo. Those were the top two in each of the two semifinals. They did some incredible battling. There was fender rubbing, there was door banging. We're gonna see a lot of that in the final as well. The question is gonna be for every driver underneath those four. Are there any underdogs who can move their way through the field? Is there anybody who can master the start, move up a couple spots and get into the pack to battle at the front? It's going to be very, very hectic stuff in the opening laps here as drivers like Camto Chakwara look to move up from starting a little bit deeper in the field and uh, catch up to those top four favorites. 
And of course, we've got so many people to thank for making all of this possible. We had more than 60,000 participants in the build-up to Prodigy Week Part 1, and our partners have helped us to build up to Prodigy Week Part 2. First off, we like to thank Sucker Punch, all-natural pickle juice shooters for clean hydration, pickle chip pouches perfect for those long sim racing sessions or days at the track, and the Jared Pickles with knockout flavor, the true champ of chop, now available in the US. Mazda Motorsports has partnered with Racing Prodigy to continue its mission of supporting race car drivers in enriching lives and developing the next racing prodigies. Mazda is supporting participants by pro providing $2,500 in coaching vouchers for the racing prodigy coaching marketplace. Aztec wheelbases with their revolutionary quick release system allows you to quickly and easily switch wheels with just a click. SimLab P1X Pro Sim Racing cockpits with unparalleled rigidity, functionality, and design are your perfect sim racing base. And last but not least, owned and operated by passionate sim racers, Advanced Sim Racing is the fastest growing North American sim racing chassis manufacturer and equipment retailer. Thank you to all of them for supporting us. And of course, the top 25% in this series, not just, of course, eligible to win these Prodigy Passes, but eligible to win a SimLab P1X Pro Sim Racing cockpit, $25.50 gift cards to the Racing Prodigy Coaching Marketplace, and three $100 Advanced Sim Racing gift cards, and three $50 Advanced Motorsports Coaching gift cards. Today, though, no points on the line in the overall series championship. Instead, Joey, just one driver going to walk away 30 minutes from now, heading to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. We saw that emotion in the intro from all the Prodigy Pass winners of last season. Are we going to see that from anybody today? Michael Romanitas has been fighting so hard for so long to win one of these Prodigy Passes on Race Room in every other simulator. This could finally be the day he does it. This is his best chance yet. Quick run down through the grid. I think we're almost ready to go. Philip Drace and Leandro Werler on the front row. Kamil Polofsky and Nico Sono behind them. Enzo Filippo, Michael Romanidis, and then Turka Hakan and Martin Barna, Jakub Brzezinski, Patrick Shari, and then Vil Cravey, Dennis Shonigo. Those are the drivers inside of the front 12. Then Nathan Maximin, uh, Michal Nej, Sven de Vries, Ivan Fornes, David Nemchek, Kamto Chukwera, Angelo Michel, Thiago Mello, Leonard Heidegger, Brandon Hawkins, Carlos Ocono, and Martin Havlana. 20 24 drivers locked onto the grid, and with the lights building, it's time to go racing in the final of round two of the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on Race Room, powered by Sucker Punch. Away we go, and it's pretty even at the front as we get ready to dive down through Paddock Hill Bend. It is going to be a tidy run, though, for Trace from Whirler, Pavlovsky, and then Sonal Romanita sits in fifth. A single fall, almost 24 machines rise towards Druids. This looks very familiar to the semi-finals single file for the opening corners but it will get crazy soon Kamil Pavlovsky who finished second in his semi-final got third ahead of Nico Soto the prodigy zipper organized them in that fashion you see a little bit further back though Jakob Brzezinski he was so aggressive in his semi-final he's already getting aggressive on lap one trying to hold off Martin Barna into Surtees we kind of wondered if maybe the drivers that really showed speed in semi-finals would, would be the main contenders but as may be expected draft's going to keep it relatively honest left side of the screen you see the plus and the minus is not much movement as we work our way in towards Hawthorne Hill out of Pilgrim's Drop for the very first time 30 minute race 10 minutes longer than we had in either of our semi-finals keep that in mind when it comes to balance and the tire conservation that drivers will keep in mind this is though really the most fun section of the track especially in machines like this down towards Dingledell and rising towards Sheen where if you're brave Joey you can stick it into the breach you're a little bit too brave though. There is that grass waiting to bite. There's grass and gravel waiting to bite on the exit of Sterlings. It's a track that does have a little bit of margin for error. You can keep an MX-5 going through the grass, but if you're wide out through there, you are losing tons of time and you can't afford to do that too many times. Side by side for P4 though, Romanidis is looking to move his way forward. He should have finished ahead of, uh, of Nico Soner if he didn't get into the back of uh, Philip Drace in his heat. So he knows he's probably a little bit faster and needs to make track position now. So a half-hearted attempt as well for Leandro Werler to have to fend off the challenge from Pavlovsky. Watch from behind as I think that is going to be Romanidis in the Sucker Punch car now defending from Turka Hakkinen in the black Aztec Simsport car lurking in the inside but outside switches back to inside as down into Graham Hill Bend you will descend. Hakkinen feels brave though and you can run onto that AstroTurf to try and take advantage. All these 22 drivers or so at the front uh, running cleanly. It looks like Carlos Ocono unfortunately 
has had an issue, is almost three wide. We go through Surtees. And Romanidis got ahead of this just at the right opportunity. He was losing a ton of time, but he is not out of draft range, nor is Nico Sunil. These guys are in danger, though. Enzo Filipao, he's up a couple of spots. I misspoke earlier and said he finished second in his heat. He actually finished third, so he's looking forward. Hakkinen and Brzezinski in very similarly painted cars kicking up dust. It's only three minutes into the race, and you're already seeing the level of aggression we're going to see for the next 27 minutes. We might actually be seeing a three-car train already starting to break away. Just keep your eyes on the fact that uh, Nico Sono and Michael Romanidis now almost a full second off of the podium sitters in this final of the second round. And we mentioned it in the semifinals. Round three, the final round in this Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series begins at Mid-Ohio in just a few hours' time. So head on over to RacingProdigy.com. Get your race room game pass available for just $14.99, which enters you into every Prodigy Racing League event on race room for the next 12 months. And I must say, I hope that, Joey, we keep this Mazda MX-5 because it's great as Michael Romanidis up the inside and trying to work forward to those podium spots. And this is a big decision for Romanidis, and he made the right one. He got by Cernal into turn one without any difficulty whatsoever. It was a risk, because if he ran side by side with Cernal, that would entirely lose them the top three. And that would mean that Romanidis and Cernal would be fighting for fourth place at the absolute best. But he made the move when he had the opportunity, cleared him into turn one, and hopefully for him, it's not going to be a fight. And he can set his sights forward on those front three. He's out of draft range now. He only needs about half a tenth, though, to get back in there and uh, think about this win again and you know we were talking in semi-finals for as martin Ooh. barner three wide off the corner and of course one driver gonna end up in the grass and now fortunately not too much momentum being lost as joey had kind of alluded to before but now bumper drafts are being played and all sorts of shenanigans on the run in towards hawthorne who's gonna get out of this on the other side cleanly and remember all of this dragging them away from those in front great fighting but my heavens above, it's not what they wanted to see. And this might not be the fight for the win, but it is the fight for every single spot as you move forward as there's some extra rally cross. Nathan Maximin, I think going over the Maximin of the track limits, losing even more time and falling even deeper in this train. It's very easy to do that, to get into a bad rhythm. And that was a bad dive. I think that was Ville Cravey going around and they pile in. It was indeed. Sven de Vries tangled up as well. A couple of drivers will just sail on through. And David Nemchak is now plus five from where he started. So some drivers have been taking advantage of this pack racing. Now on the exit of that final corner, they were definitely making contact, but were able to get through that one without too much drama. So, I mean, great to watch. It's allowing those up front to just continue to break away. And going back to Romanidis, now that he's clear of Nico Sonal, hasn't really made inroads on the top three just yet. You can keep an eye on the, the leaders on the left side of your screen. He's still, Joey, a full second off of them. The old double feature. There's just so much to watch. You need to have both of your eyes. You need to have three eyes, potentially, to be able to see everything that's going on. Brandon Hawkin on the right side of your screen. Kind of unfortunate to see him as deep as he is in the field. He's a very exciting driver, but he's getting excitable, I think, as he gets forced out of the way again. He may fall all the way to the back of this pack. And all he can do now is just fight for every spot he can get and at least try and maximize this finishing position as he thinks forward to the next event at Mid-Ohio. And remember, he dropped back in the semifinal uh, at one point outside of the top 12, was able to get back in. So, uh, you know, just about squeaked in, started towards the tail end, 22nd place, penultimate row, and left him at a bit of a disadvantage and now finds himself already nine seconds off of the lead. Let's jump back to them with 24 minutes left to rumble. Still waiting for Romanidis to join them, but he is closing in that sucker punch car. He's bringing the pit fit entry of Nico Sonal with him too, but Drace in the SCCA car and then Pavlovsky and Wurla chasing behind, at least right now, haven't started forcing the issue just yet. And this is kind of incredible for Michael Romanidis. He made this up with no draft help whatsoever. And, uh, and with no help of the top three fighting with each other. This is just raw speed, and that's very scary for everybody up front. You see Leandro Werla sending it side by side now for P1. He's trying to get around Philip Drace because he knows this is not just the three-car battle anymore. Michael Romanidis is probably the fastest driver in the field right now. He's in this battle, and Nico Sunil is uh, taking a back seat, looking to pounce just like he did in semifinal one. And we've got action at the front, business picking up. Leandro Werla tried to make the move in the white Assetek Simsport car. You've got the white SCCA machine that leads. And then, of course, third for Camille Pavlovsky in the MPI car, the bright green for Sucker Punch. 
making it nice and easy to figure out who is who. As back out of Surtees, we will cycle around on lap four. 22 and a half minutes still left to go. These drivers get up to around 180, 190 odd kilometers an hour at their maximum, but really it goes back to the average corner speed that we were talking about that makes it such a high commitment. I mean, you look off the back of the race leader and you just see how close they run as well through some of these corners. That onboard bumper cam is always crazy because that's not even the closest they get. If there's a little bit of a bump to the rear end, you're going to see it and the camera is going to be totally blocked. And we've seen that so many times so far this afternoon. It is full contact sports car racing when you're in an MX-5. If you want to push, if you need to push, you can definitely get away with it. Leandro Werla did not have a good run through those final couple of corners, though. Lost a little bit of ground to Drace and he may lose ground to Pavlovsky, who's now looking for the move into the final corner. Yeah, but ooh, a bit of contact on entry. I think eventually Pavoski just realizes that Romanidis is there and he's got to block the momentum. Here comes the Koanda Esports driver in that bright green machine. Not going to get the run down into turn one, but now Nico Sonal has joined them as well. And not far off behind, Jakub Brzezinski, Turka Hakan, and Enzo Filippo. Those are all drivers that have shown speed on occasion as well. Maybe not the consistency from these drivers up front from qualifying through to the race as well, but you can't count any of them out, especially knowing, of course, Nikodem uh, Wisniewski, the G2 Esports driver who won the very first Prodigy Pass in Prodigy, uh, in the Prodigy Racing League Season 1 Part 2, will be cheering on his teammate Jakub Brzezinski and be hoping he can close that margin down. Never say never with 21 minutes left to go. An unfortunate news for fans of Sven de Vries. He's already our first DNF of the day, so unfortunate for him, but did a good job to make the semifinal, I have a, or to make the final. I have a feeling we'll see him again at Mid-Ohio next week, or in the coming weeks, rather. Ivan Fornes, he's trying to look forward, but this pack, this battle for about 14th through 20th, has just been kind of uh, it's just been kind of exactly that they haven't been moving forward they've just been battling for every spot they can possibly get and just going for glory at this point the win is probably out of the conversation if you're as far back as here you just want every spot every bit of practice you can get in the next 17 minutes that you can take on into the future yeah these points don't end up counting for the season long championship in the prodigy racing league mazda mx5 cup golden ticket series on race room powered by sucker punch the winner of that across of the three rounds at road america here at uh, brands hatch and then of course at mid ohio in the build-up that uh, that points winner also gets a prodigy pass uh, and then of course uh, the top 25 in season points are eligible to submit a video to the prodigy search selection committee and we will select two more drivers six in total from race room to go and represent that prodigy week and oh there's a look to the outside the andrew whirler got a great run out of the opening corner door to door contact he's bullied wide off the apex can Pavlovsky take advantage on the run down the hill you don't think about it, but unfortunately, the door is just not open again. That's exactly what's going to make the uh, the three drivers at the back of this train very happy, though. That kind of side by side running, the door banging and the potentially running each other off the road. That's what's going to open the door. If you're a driver like Romanidis or Nico Sonal, you need trouble in the front. You need those doors to be open because you can't really make those passes on your own when you're in a draft train like this. You need a little bit of help. And Pavlovsky forces the door open on Verla coming down the straight. Word coming in, by the way, as you see just the twitch of the car as it sends it into the corner. Uh, Romanidis finished uh, rounds one and two, number one in point. So even if he doesn't force the issue here and finally claim the Prodigy Pass today, he's got a real shot of advancing through the regular leaderboard. And that's why you're not going to see him force the issue. Although I will say, I hope we get a tune out of Michael Romanidis at some point because that piano has been looking in the background for a long, long time. If he gets a Prodigy Pass, he better have his own victory song ready to go. Yeah, that would be key if he can get that done. But oh. I think he wants to win on track. He wants to oh, win on track. I don't Joey. think he wants to. I don't think he wants to win in the points. I don't think he just wants the uh, the crescendo at the end of the season to be, yay, you didn't win a race, but you won in the points. He wants to win a race. He wants to do it straight and get uh, get that prodigy past the old fashioned way. Did you did you mean to make that pun? Yes, and it, I tried. I tried to. I, I tried to talk long enough that you would uh, you would not be able to come back to it. It is key. I mean, that that is just piano humor at its worst. We love Best. piano However humor. you want to look at it. Uh, there's a look at Kabil Pavlovsky. No piano behind him uh, as he looks very, very focused. I mentioned it in the semifinal. Got a handbrake there. I hope he doesn't ever need to use that in this Mazda MX-5, though. 
Yeah, he didn't in the semifinal. I mean, Romanidis might have needed to use it in the semifinal. Remember his incident with Nico Sunnel in the second to last corner? There was a big slide there. So who knows? Maybe on the final lap, if it comes down to who's got the most car control recovering from an incident, maybe that handbrake could help him spin it around faster than anybody else. Still got Brzezinski and Hacken and not too far back. It's 1.2 between them and this lead of five cars that now rumbles 17 minutes still left on that clock. So we're nearing around uh, the 20 minute mark when drivers will know based on the semi-final what the condition of their tires are gonna be like. After that though, in racing conditions, 30 minutes, who's got the most grip? That's what we're waiting to see, especially in these Mazdas where you do spend an awful lot of the time. It seems as though effectively four wheel drifting them. I mean, look at how much sideways lateral slip Philip Trace had there in the race leading machine. And you, one thing that he had in semi-final one, was a lot of fun with Michael Romanidis. You know what we didn't see so much of a semi-final two with Leandro Werler and Camille Pavlovsky? Fun. It was, it was a little bit less fun. I think it was reasonably fun though. They had a couple of moments. It just unfortunately came down to the final lap being a little bit less close. But that's what I like about this format here. You got semi-final one, semi-final two, and the best drivers from each advances into the final. That means that you've, you've kind of got new battles introduced in the final. You've got used to the people you were racing in the semifinal, but now suddenly Michael Romanidis didn't race with Leandro Whirl in the semifinal. He might not necessarily know his techniques. He might not know his style of racing as much, but he's got to merge with him now, and you've got the blending of the styles all the way down the field. And of course, you know, we talked about there being six prodigy passes being winnable from race room. There's six available on iRacing as well and four from street cart racing. I did want to highlight that the second event uh, on street cart racing, which you can download on the Apple uh, App Store, the daily qualifiers closed yesterday, but the finals uh, run for the next week. So a week from today, we'll know another driver from street cart racing. So from their iPhone, from their iPad, that will go and join Craig Tough Monkey Laws uh, as representing the street cart racing community in Prodigy Week. It's always crazy to think that there are very, very capable, talented drivers who can master the art of balancing grip on a phone. And we saw uh, Lauren Beerton in Prodigy Week Part One, 737 pilot by day, street cart racer by night, and now Prodigy Pass winner. He can do it anyway. I mean, if there was like a, a speed pick a leading contest, I think that'd be the way I get my prodigy pass in. But street cart racing, it's uh, I still haven't I still haven't successfully downloaded it yet. Arjuna, we've uh, we've talked about this every week. I need to do that so I can try and get into the next one because that might be my only chance. Uh, and then you don't even have to leave the commentary booth. See, you're thinking big brain. Exactly. Now, I, Philip can, I can do it while I'm commentating right now. I can use my phone. Philip Trace goes very defensive on the run up towards Druids, really still forcing Whirler to commit the long way around. And now finally, finally, Camille Pavlovsky's alongside down into Graham Hill Bend. He'll back out, but only after finally putting his nose into the fight. And that ITB machine is surely going to be thinking, if I can get a little bit of a better exit, I can stick alongside and maybe try and do something different. We've got five cars, five cars split by under a second as we work down onto the Pilgrim's drop. Still Jakub Brzezinski, Turka Hakkinen not far behind, keeping honest. And we did see in semi-final two, Enzo Filipao getting stronger and stronger as the race went on. And rather scarily, we're past halfway. I don't know how this happened. I don't know where the first 16 minutes went, but we've only got probably about nine laps to go with the line if, I, if my calculations are correct. So if you want to start pouncing, if you want to start moving forward, you can't really afford to wait any longer. We talked at Road America about the uh, the Peloton of sorts, about how you hold back for a couple of moments. You maybe start pouncing at the end of uh, at the end of 10 minutes to go, and then you start making your moves. You can't afford to wait at all here. You needed to start making your moves at the start of the, at the start of the green flag. And that's what a lot of these drivers have been doing. But it's so difficult to pass around here that Michael Romanidis and Nico Sonal and even Brzezinski, if they want to move forward, they can't afford to wait any longer. They need to push and open some doors aggressively. At this point as well, you can see that Pavlovsky's forcing the issue. He's making Leandro Werler do something. And there was definitely three car train pushing out of turn one. 
Pavlovsky goes to the inside. Whirler's got no choice but to go the long way around. Similarly behind, Romanita side by side with Sonal. And back to the inside goes the bright orange machine of Pavlovsky. The MPI car stays where it is. Status quo remains. But business starting to pick up. And with the elbows rising, intensity building as well. That's the one moment that maybe those behind. Jakub Brzezinski, Turka hacking and needed to get back into drafting range. Well, that was a little bit of a, a pool ball move or a, a billiards move, a snooker move. That was Pavlovsky basically forcing Philip Drace into the corner and uh, trying to get both of them out of the way incidentally or deliberately either way that was the kind of thing he needed to do it didn't work out for him that time but you're going to see that a lot more as they're almost three wide bumper to bumper oh! to bumper and that is leandro Worla across the grass but what car control back into line and without really slipping over each other Again, nothing really has changed other than now Jakub Brzezinski and Turka Hakkinen have joined all of that. That was building. That was inevitable. And now with 12 minutes still left to go, Joey, something like that surely is not far away from happening again. Now, when something like that happens, when the aggression rises to that level, it doesn't really stop. It's going to happen again, and it's not going to go quite as well the next time. Racing drivers do not learn from situations like that because they can't really afford to learn from a situation like that. They need to keep fighting. They need to keep going for the win. And you're going to see that level of aggression yet again. Three wide to turn one. Pavlovsky can't make it happen. He's got to slot back in line. But look for the bowling ball move into Druids again. If he can get close enough, he can't get to the bumper this time, though. Big commitment under the brakes from the Brazilian and really trying to pinch Drace onto the inside curb. But just look how he tries to then run Whirler out of room in response. This is high level racecraft. I mean, Mazda MX-5, I think, definitely proved this past weekend that the racing in the real world is up there in terms of caliber of talent with anyone else out there. Unfortunately for Camto Chukwera, he drops to the back of the field. Carlos Ocono, Sven de Vries and Ivan Fornes, three confirmed. Uh, DNF slash disqualifications in one case and not going to see the end. We will get 11 minutes still left to go in this one. And Joey, I have no idea who comes out on top. I'll, I'll give you an opportunity to think about an answer. But I want to hear an answer from you. No sitting on the fence here. I don't know. I don't know if I can afford to jinx anybody, Arjuna. I might, I might have to sit on the fence, but... <sighs> I think it has to be from the front, too. It has to be either Drace or Verla. The only way that's not happening is if they come together again and they're both taken out and Pavlovsky comes in to, uh, to snatch it. But I think it's coming from the first two. I'll give you a real decision in about eight minutes time. Eight minutes. Oh, you're really going to cover your cover yourself off there and give yourself some more time. Exactly. What as soon as what the white flag comes out. What I will say is I, I remember talking with Moritz Lohner, who's competed in many a race room esports competition before and actually won a, a season in DTN Trophy through race room. And what he said was race rooms online contact model is amongst the best that there is. It allows you to do things you may not dare on other platforms. We're bumper to bumper and all over each other out of turn one. Three wide for the lead and there'll be three wide behind as well. Where does Philip Drace go? Not to the lead because Campbell Pavlovsky's ripped it away from him. Michael Romanita second. Whirler now suddenly down to fifth position. And has there been drama? Philip Drace was instantly sent back to pit lane. I do wonder, was that the incident limit, Arjuna, that Philip Drace hit with that contact? You only get 30 incident points in a race like this, and he might have run off track too many times, and then a, a couple extra points for contact there. They have just ended the day for Philip Drace. And he had led for a solid 20 minutes. One moment with car contact changes the picture and suddenly, suddenly things have changed around. Michael Romanidis in the hot seat. Turka Hakkinen still representing needracing.com while Philip Drace unfortunately has his issues. He suddenly finds himself promoted into the hot seat. Brzezinski in fourth, Wurla, uh, rather Brzezinski in fifth, Wurla in fourth. I, I don't even know what to say right now. Remember when I said I wasn't going to make my decision for about eight minutes? That's, that's exactly why. They went three by three, Indy 500 pace lap style into Druids. Everybody made contact. There was not a single car that came out of that corner with no damage on it, or at least no rubbed paint off of it. That's incredible stuff. And uh, suddenly Pavlovsky and Romanidis, who may have been totally out of this, may have just been uh, forced to fight for third, the two in front of them end up tripping over each other, and suddenly we've got two new stars, and Turka Hakkinen as well, the potential underdog from fourth. 
You got to wonder if some of the other drivers have uh, been a little bit more careful about how much they run off the track and whatnot, but oh, that's that's going to put some nerves. Romanidis gets it pushed wide slightly by Turga Hakkinen. We'll just say, by the way, only 23 took to the start. I was trying to figure out what happened. Seems as though Dennis Schoeniger had a slight technical issue. He wasn't able to get ready in time to get to the grid. And so 23 ended up starting on board with a lot of lock being wheeled through. Surtees as behind. Andrew Werler tries to fend off Jakub Brzezinski as well as Nico Sonal. They have still potentially got to worry about Enzo Filippo, uh, Michal Neg, and a couple of others behind who are now slowly, Joey, starting to close as well. Well, Enzo Filippo should really be up here. He had an issue early on. I think it was coming out of Druids, lost some time, fell down a couple of spots. So by virtue of some good luck and some hard racing up front, Enzo may just get to retake his spot in this pack. He's going to be in with a very difficult job, though. Being seventh in line here, it's not the worst place in the world if they go three wide into Druids again, two by two, but I don't know of the uh, high likelihood of that happening. There is still going to be hard racing up front, but you're going to want to be in that lead pack in those maybe top three spots if you're going to want to win this race, because as they cross the line this time, I think it's going to be five laps to go only. I'm not going to stick my nose in with the math there. I'm going to trust you since we're around a similar sort of clock range to where we were the last time I asked that question. Now, Jakub Brzezinski's onboard shows him very, very focused. Uh, we were taking a look at what some of the drivers are doing in between uh, their respective semifinals and the final. Brzezinski just sat in his rig, was on YouTube, very, very relaxed. He's feeling a little bit more stressed right now as Sonal's pit fit entry tries to get up the inside, but Brzezinski's not going to have that. He might still have an overlap down the hill in towards turn three gives it a good go and gonna lean on each other very slightly Brzezinski holds a little bit of room for Nico Sonal to then come back and squeeze him back and more great side to side racing with six minutes to go but all of this happening as at the front of the field Pavlovsky and now Hakkinen starting to try and build a gap to those behind yeah, this is worrying for Brzezinski and Sonal. It's a little bit too late to be fighting like this, I think. You can see the gaps already expanded to one and a half seconds. And as they run side by side through the 90 degree corner at Hawthorns, they're just losing and losing and losing even more time. Sonal's forced off the road. He's going to slot back in line ahead of Philippow. But now it's a three car battle for fourth. And it's not going to be a battle for the win anymore for these guys. Now you would think unless something else was to happen up front in the next five minutes, Philip Howell will get past Nico Sonal on the rise up in towards the Sheen curve. And now just Sterling's back towards Clark and to the line to make it five minutes left. So, Emil Pavlovsky leads by around three tenths of a second from Turka Hakkinen, Michael Romanidis, and then Leandro Werler, who sat for so long in second, now demoted down to fourth and trying to scheme his way, architect his way back to the front. Five minutes left do believe that we are going to officially have those four laps left to run. I, I, do you feel like you can pick a winner now, Joey? We're down to four. No, no. I would have a 25% chance of picking the winner, but that's why I had to delete DraftKings because my chances are usually never right. So we'll give you another couple of minutes. We'll see if things become a bit clearer. That's the red and white sucker punch entry of Enzo Filippow that's going to pressure onto Nico Sonal after closing back up. He's another one that you do have to look sideways uh, in order to, that's to, just to how take a look at the webcam. Well, see, that, the, that's the, just how they build them. You could, there's a joke there to be written, right? If someone comes in from Australia or, or, or New Zealand and their camera is upside down as Philip Powell runs a little bit wide, I didn't realize there was a joke to be made about people in, in Europe potentially being yeah. sideways. In Montenegro, they point them to the left. In France, they point them to the right. Who knew? We're, le we're learning new things about camera manufacturing today. It's a good point. They were actually both in different directions, weren't they? Yeah. Not I don't even know memory. how that spot. They must be on a phone or something. They must be those, uh, those new French phones. We have 10 different countries represented in the top 10 right now as it stands. Remember, nine countries represented in the 12 drivers that made up the Prodigy Week Part, uh, Prodigy Week Part 1 driver crew. We'll have a total of 18 drivers at Prodigy Week Part 2 on May the 13th to start things off. We'll find out how much of an international contingent we'll have once again. Nathan Maximum, I think, has joined the Disqualification Club along with Philip Drace and Ivan Fornes. Of course, 10 more minutes, actually, Joey. Something else to consider if you're cutting the track a lot and racking up those points. Uh, I hope you were keeping that in mind when it came to the 30-minute main event. 
Yeah, that's it's an interesting part of this series as a whole. The 30 incident point limit. Hakkinen tries to send it to the inside to Druids. Doesn't open the door all the way, but definitely forced Pavlovsky into a mistake. Got a little bit deeper than he would have liked. The outside, though, coming down the hill here doesn't really work out very often, and that's going to allow Romanitas to get to the inside now. That's exactly what Michael needed. A door to open for him, and Turka did open it for him. And can he take advantage and make the move stick? Oh, he gets a bit of contact with Pavlovsky as they work off the corner. Hacken and run into the grass for a moment. And now Leandro Whirler, not with some draft, but still with the opportunity just to cycle on through and make third his own as single far once again. Two and a half minutes left on that clock. It's four cars split by less than half a second as they flick it to the right out of... Hawthorns in towards Westfield. Oh, big moment there for Hacken and sawing at the wheel. He's feeling a little bit hot right now, I'm sure. Was in the fight for the win. Was in one of the best places, potentially, in second. And now he's all the way at the back of this train with all of that work to do ahead of him. It's not over, though. Romanidis and Pavlovsky, they both had their chances to get aggressive in the semifinals. When you put two aggressive drivers together, maybe even three with Leandro Worla behind, I don't know. There's a high likelihood that as I think we're going to take the white flag this time, we have not seen the last bits of contact in this race. Watch it tick down. Average lap times around 139. So will it be the white flag? Will we be destined to see two more? It's very It'll close. It could be two. I mean, every race we've had today, it's been close. Now, do these drivers feel confident? Does Michael Romanides think he's got to go for it up towards Druids? Pavlovsky doesn't give him the choice. Rising up in towards the corner, onto the brakes. Really out there for Romanides. He gets the rear end stepping out of him. Behind, Hakkinen gets past Leandro Whirler. This very, may very well be the final lap of the race. Romani just sent a massive throw into the into Druids to try and get around the outside of Pavlovsky, but it was a little bit too aggressive, got a little bit too late in the brakes, and, and lost quite a bit of time there. He needs to focus in the rest of this middle sector, getting closer to Pavlovsky. Use this long straight to get as close as humanly possible. Hope you can get a good run through Hawthorne, through Westfield, and through Sheen, because you're only going to get a couple more chances through those final two corners if this is the last lap indeed. Remember, Romanidis. P1 and points in both rounds one and two in this Prodigy Racing League. Uh, Mazda Golden Ticket MX5 Cup Series on race room powered by Sucker Punch. He's not going to go for it this time. He's not close enough. I get the sense. One more, Joey. I think we're going to get one more in the books. I think the drivers might know. I'm not totally sure, but they might get told if it's the white flag by a virtual crew chief or by the sim. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what the drivers are seeing right now. We'll find out based on the reaction potentially from Camille Pavlovsky out of the final corner. Is he going to be celebrating? Does he still have one more lap to hold on? The clock's ticking down. It's going to strike zero right around the time these drivers see the line. And one more lap we'll have here in the final of the Prodigy or Racing not. League Mazda. Oh, it's the final! Camille Pavlovsky, the reaction! He's going to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. The winner in the Prodigy Racing League Mazda MX-5 Cup Golden Ticket Series on race room powered by Sucker Punch. He's only finally just realized, Joey, what this means to him. I think he realized just as we did, it wasn't just a race against the drivers. It was a race against the clock as well. But the clock said, Camille, it's over. You get the checkered flag and you get to take that win. The second Polish driver and the second G2 Esports driver to win in the last two events. 97 thousandths of a second. That was the margin that differentiated us between another lap and finishing this one after what was a dramatic end. Romanita second, just short, but Boise staking a claim to be there in the future. And then Hakkinen, Werler, Brzezinski, Sono, Filipao, Nej, Shari, and then Nemchek, the rest of your top 10. Leonard Heidegger, 11th for him after starting towards the back. A couple of drivers really having to work their way on through. What a final that was. Joey, I thought for a second we were going one more lap. I thought Camille Pavoski was going to have to deal with the pressure of one more lap. But you could see the relief being lifted. And the ITB driver is going to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. And I can't wait to catch up with him in just a few moments time. Indeed, the ITB driver, not the G2 driver. That was uh, the other Polish driver, Jakub Brzezinski. So forgive me for that. But... You could see the elation on his face, and we talked about in the semifinals that you don't see the drivers necessarily that excited for their race wins. That's because they know there's so much more to fight for in the finals, but once you've succeeded, once you get through 30 minutes of that level of aggressive racing, 
it's absolute elation. And I, I think he's going to be a very, very happy boy. And he's very excited to come to the Atlanta Motorsports Park. He's uh, been uh, jumping around of different platforms to then come and join us here on Race Room in this Golden Ticket Series. And we're joined now by our winner here in round two from Brands Hatch, Camille Pavlovsky. I mean, Camille, we could see the relief for you as you came across the line, the celebration, the joy. Talk to us. What does it mean to be the winner of Prodigy Pass and heading to the Atlanta Motorsports Park? Thank you so much. I am so, so happy, especially that was my first ever race in race room so i literally have zero experience in this game i committed myself last two weeks so so much to understand the game uh maximize my pace uh but this race i knew that i could not be the the fastest in terms of the pace so i needed to race strategically and very smartly so i didn't want to pass the second driver and try to pass him uh, just wanted to uh, wait for their action, their battles, to, you know, make uh, make advantage of their battle. And this happened. I was in perfect position after corner one to corner two, took the inside. Uh, it was the, the very crucial and super important move to, uh, to gain on P1. But then it was still 10 or 15 minutes until the end of the race. I needed to defend so, so, uh, so, so much. Yeah, um, the relief after crossing the finish line, especially on the finish line, there was zero seconds left. So I was really afraid, and like, well, afraid. <clears throat> I was curious if it will be next lap or we are finishing on this lap. And I saw uh, Michael uh, Romanidis just right on back on me on this last lap. And the relief, the, the, the relief of emotion when it was zero was just... Oh my God, I'm so happy, so happy and really proud of myself con considering really lack of experience in this uh, sim. You, you mentioned the lack of experience, but you've experienced a lot in the world of sim racing, right? Uh, world's fastest gamer a, a few years ago. You were Ferrari Esports champion back in 2021. Racing Prodigy is preparing for the Prodigy Draft, where Prodigy Week drivers may get the opportunity to be selected as a real-world Prodigy Racing League driver and sign a paid professional racing contract. What would that mean to you? You talk about you know the emotions of just getting to here and getting the win. What does that next step look like for you? Yeah, now I need, really need to think about that it's real and it will happen and it will happen very, very soon because it's happening next month. As you mentioned, uh, I do sim racing full time. I do sim racing professionally uh, for about five or six years already. And uh, in terms of real uh, motorsport experience, this is my dream. This is my goal and I want to fulfill it. Uh, and the only f I think the only way for me is by sim racing and by showcasing the talent in sim racing uh, because there is more and more projects like this where you can uh, by sim racing win some competition and have some experience on real track. Uh, I was, as you said, I was doing World Fastest Gamer, a similar opportunity from sim to real, a dream to drive competition in Lithuania and now racing prodigy. So. I will really do my best to to be the best there on the track. And I really cannot wait. One more question. We'll let you go celebrate. Part of, of course, Prodigy Week is going to be a fitness assessment. I know you've been doing a lot of fitness. You did a 5K. You beat your PB. You're doing a half marathon, I think, in a week's time. What's your goal for that one? What's the goal time? Oh, yeah, actually, yes, exactly. I am doing half marathon next week in uh, Warsaw, in Poland. Uh, goal is to yeah I was I I do running for about five years already but I switched to like more serious running for about one year or half a year and I was preparing very very much for a half marathon and I am aiming to beat one hour thirty minutes so well fingers crossed for for me especially that's my debut and the pace is very high but I cannot wait fitness is my uh, everyday thing. I uh, I do running. I do gym uh, sessions. So so yeah. Well, you can come and join me for a run around the Atlanta Motorsports Park during Prodigy Week, just as long as you don't expect me to run that fast. Congratulations, Camille Pavlovsky. You're going to the Atlanta Motorsports Park on May the 13th. Thank you very much. We'll head down from Camille Pavlovsky to second place. Michael Romanita standing by with Joey Tebbin. Indeed, we will. Michael Romanitas.
Unfortunately, yet again, talking to you as a second place finisher, but it came down to that final lap. It came down to potentially the difference between a checkered flag and a white flag. What more did you need in those final laps to take this win? Uh, not a lot, to be honest. Uh, maybe just one more chance uh, in the last lap. I think we finished with 30 minutes and one tenth. So if the last lap was like uh, two tenths quicker, we would have had one more lap. Um, which I was counting on. I was kind of looking at the lap time at the last lap and seeing, correlating it with the time remaining. And I couldn't tell uh, because it was so close. But yeah, in the end, just as we went across the line, we saw the final lap. And uh, yeah, I keep getting quite close. Um, every time a little bit closer, this time just one tenth. But uh, yeah, as far as I understand the, the format, there is a quite a decent advantage from the from the leaderboards uh, so that's what I'll be aiming at uh, for week three but of course it would have been quite nice to lock it in an actual uh, race coming into the next event mid Ohio the final of the uh, the race room events planned I assume we're gonna see you there leading that championship how much more confidence are you gonna take into that knowing that you've been so competitive in these last two and you know you can fight for the win yeah, I'll definitely be trying quite a lot, especially on the leaderboard, just trying to to maximize that and then basically say, see how that goes. Um, and uh, yeah, probably I'll be taking, hopefully I can qualify and uh, hopefully I'll be taking part uh, in that race as well. It's a track which I don't think I've ever done a race at. Um, barely know where the track goes, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll have a look at that and uh, yeah, see. But uh, of course, uh, with these cars, the races are quite fun. Uh, at least um, but yeah they're quite they're quite tricky to to manage as a driver you have so many so many different drivers I think there was a seven car train today just fighting for the win um, because of how the slipstream is but um, yeah it was quite entertaining hopefully and um, yeah eyes on the on the next race was entertaining indeed Michael we'll see you in a couple of weeks time hopefully we'll have you playing that piano after your next win <laughs> thank you yeah <laughs> Michael Romanidis is coming home second today, Arjuna, but it looks like we've got third place Turka Hakkinen as well. Uh-huh. Yes, and I hope Michael knows that we're going to hold him to that. Turka, seemed like a very interesting race from your perspective. You had to initially work to close up to the lead pack, and then your teammate Philip had his unfortunate moment that saw him drop from the race, get disqualified on incident points, and suddenly you're in second and fighting for the win. What, what went through your mind in that moment as you found yourself battling for the lead? I mean, when you are in P7 and the whole queue is doing the same speed as you, you are kind of just waiting for an opening. And when I saw that uh, squabble into turn one and two, I knew it was my moment. So I just went for it, took my usual line and found myself in P3. And from there, you can actually do a lot more since it's not just a slipstream train and you can actually make a difference with your racecraft. And so we just asked Michael a little bit about going over to mid-Ohio, the type of racing that we're going to see there. Comparing Road America to this, very different sort of a track, do you think mid-Ohio is going to be a bit more similar to this and that we might see a little bit of plenty of two wide and three wide action? It's it's going to be closer to this. I think mid-Ohio suits this car the best. It's going to be amazing racing, so you don't want to miss that for sure. How confident are you feeling? Uh, well, I have a great teammate who's good enough to help me. So let's see what we can do together. And I think Mid Ohio is a good track for me. So let's see if we can at least get one car through to the golden ticket. Well, best of luck, Turka. It was a very interesting day today and can't wait to see you both hopefully back out at Mid Ohio. Thank you. Always great to be able to catch up to three drivers, all with cameras to look at as well, and to be able to see their faces, to see the emotion. And the emotion from Kamil Pavlovsky, again, just to reiterate, if that final lap of that final had been 97 thousandths shorter, we probably would have seen another lap. That was the margin that Michael Romanidis thinks he might have needed, Joey, to go for the win. It was good to hear from Michael, though, in that interview that he's not feeling too bad about coming home short so many times. He is in the lead of the season long standings by a good margin. And if he's as consistent as he's been at mid Ohio in the next event, he'll probably get the prodigy pass that way. But I know he wants to win a race. Finally, he's had so many chances. He's been so close and I want to hear him play the piano. Gosh, darn it. Yes. And, you know, I guess there's two ways of looking at it, right. You could be very happy with 
for example, being Nikodem Wisniewski, you, you won your Prodigy Pass in the first event, and you've been watching on from the sidelines. You haven't really had to be continuing to fight. In Romanidis' case, he's continuing to be consistently at the top, and you know that maybe will give him a bit of confidence going into the final round. Again, at Mid-Ohio, you can get your Racing Prodigy membership. The Race Room Game Pass is available for $14.99. Gets you in to all Race Room Prodigy Racing League events for the next 12 months and let's not forget top 25 percent will all now be thinking that okay we've got one more chance at mid ohio to win a golden ticket maybe michael romanidis has already got one hand on the other ticket for the overall championship some of these people now are going to be putting together their resumes to be sending over to the search selection committee yeah, it's not just the driving on track that can get you a prodigy pass. The search selection committee is a big part of it, and uh, that's plenty of drivers who have maybe shown themselves very, very well in the midfield or at the top of the field, maybe didn't come away with the win. Jakob Brzezinski, I'll give him as an example today, drove from somewhat further back in the field in his semifinal all the way to finishing in the top five in the final. That's one of those performances that maybe isn't rewarded with a trophy, but it might be rewarded with a selection by the prodigy search committee. And we're only 57 days away from May the 13th from kicking things off for Prodigy Week Part 2 at the Atlanta Motorsports Park. And now we know the third driver that's won their Prodigy Pass from Season 1 Part 2. Oi, oh, can't wait for it. And of course, don't forget, thank you to Sucker Punch, to Assetec, to Grid, SimLab, uh, Advanced Motorsport, and so many others behind the scenes for making this all possible. Don't forget to follow us on the Racing Prodigy YouTube channel, as well as on social media. YouTube's is where, YouTube is where all the search selection committees will be. Social media is where you can follow all the latest news, including, of course, that Julian Klaffenbach will be joining the winners from Season 1 Part 2 at Prodigy Week Part 2. For the team behind the scenes, for Joey Tebbin alongside myself, Arjuna Kangi Party, thank you so much for joining us. Just a couple more events to go before we're at Atlanta to do it all again. Can't wait for that. So long for now.